are live. There we go. Perfect. Hello, everybody. Hello. How's everybody doing out there? How's everybody feeling? Good. Like my mouth has been violated. <laughs> Whoa. Why? You know, actually, me too. Dentist. Oh, okay. Oof. <laughs> We both, without planning it, had dentist appointments today. <laughs> okay, so we played you we have. played a lot of It Takes Two last night, and that <laughs> there is some that that game is if you haven't played it yet, it's a fucking blast. It's an absolute the vacuum blast. machine. The bad suck. Yeah, I'm gonna have nightmares of that. Yeah. <laughs> it went. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen uh, the Brave Little Toaster, but oh my gosh. It takes me back. Yeah, it's it's got some extreme brave little toaster vibes, and uh, the vacuum in the beginning is. It reminds me of the. Um, uh, it what is was not it? suitable for children. No, I mean, in no, not really, not not really. That um, part, definitely not. No, it's it's good though. It's it's such a good game. I think everybody oh, should give it a shot. It's really great if you're looking for like a co-op game that you can play with somebody who is an adult, <laughs> or. <laughs> Of of mature mind. I'm I an definitely... adult. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's meant for kids, but I'm like, I don't know if I'm comfortable with a child playing and seeing that scene. Specifically, like... that was horrifying to me. It just, I feel like there'd be a lot that just like went over kids' heads, right? Like, Maybe. Like they oh, put stuff in there on purpose. Maybe they'd the think parents. it'd be funnier, but uh, it was just horrifying to me. That would be. Uh, it takes two. Yeah. <laughs> It takes two. It's it's a it's a super fun game. Was not expecting it to be as as fun as it is, but man, Look, it's super good. I don't love to die. It just happens to me. Okay. Uh yeah. Just, <laughs> Maggie, Maggie, I'm pretty certain set a record on on stream <laughs> for most respawns in a, in a single you. five minute period. I was like, I'm not good at platforming games, so if you want to do this. Yeah, and they certainly make it difficult on you for that much. Yeah. So. Uh, last time we played, guys, short of the immediate knowledge of everybody leveling up, which I know that not everybody was able to, um, what did we, what happened last time? What, what, let's talk about it briefly. Can anybody remember what happened? I know it's been a week. Bri was wrongfully accused and was threatened by a party member who he had gone crazy because he had, uh, shoved glass in his eye is how I remember mm. it. Uh, there's right. no other context which is why he that. was crying when uh certain things were being said to him because he's completely innocent and had no emotional response at all to it wow. <laughs> this feels personal before that though you were in the bathroom stealing keys from the rest of the party out of a pocket watch wait 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 wait! i did not steal a key from the rest of the party <laughs> that did not belong to the rest of the party i stole a key from kendra well, that makes it all better then. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, it depends on who you're it's stealing like, from. It's like half a key, right? Or is it a full key? If I you're, think? if you're stealing from King John, they love you and they write a book about you. All right. But if you steal a locket from Kendra, suddenly you're a bad guy. You well, don't, no you don't one caught you. So that's good. Well, I mean, <laughs> yet. <laughs> no one's caught me yet. <laughs> A matter of time, I think. It's matter a matter of time. of time on that one, yeah. Well, Oz knew you took something. Doesn't Mums. know the details of it. That's true, but I just assume that our alliance is steady and it'll never be revealed. That's I just until assume. the word mums is is stated. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like I can trust Oz, so Bry doesn't have any issues right now. Well, that works out until it doesn't, but that works out. So yeah, you <laughs> um, you broke you broke the watch. You broke the the brass watch. And now we've we found ourselves in in some situation. There there was a lot of spookiness that occurred. You're just you're just yeah. a, a big fucking like me as a today. ghost. Like me as a yeah, ghost. Yeah, right now you're just you're, you're oh group. I'm the <laughs> lopper chopper. You're coming at you. Oh, uh, there see, I am. I'm back you now. revealed your true uh, state. <laughs> then that you that you come back. Yeah, well, we I, did I grew start off with uh, Tamarini Torvin um, and the ghost girl um, yes. who was petting Peverin's head and singing um, in the room downstairs. So mm -hmm. that was kind of like the beginning, which totally cool. You want to chill with your ghost friend? Yeah, I, like I'm, I don't have problems with it. Seems like Rihanna. 
Seems like others might though. So what happened with, with, with your ghost so friend? They were there. That would have been a Temerity Torvin experience. What um, mm -hmm. what can you guys recall from the immediate events of uh, of the woman? What's her name? The this something. Vesor Vesoriana. There we go. Yeah, there Vesoriana. Go. That's her name. For sure is. That name. V v <laughs> Very, uh, uh, like a war World of Warcraft dragon sound. Yeah, half a League of Legends character. Yeah. Maybe half, yeah. she's actually a dragon. Maybe. And that's why she Knowing can still travel between the worlds. Or Kendra's a dragon. I mean, technically anyone can be a dragon. Those crafty <laughs> bastards. Everyone's a I dragon have, now. Anyone horns. can be a dragon, all right? It's crafty <laughs> dragon. There are certain dragons that all they do is mimic human life. That's all they do. That's like their whole life. Like silver dragons will we'll do that shit. I mean, I have silver horns. I'm not saying I'm not a dragon in disguise. You'd think I'm a tiefling. I don't know about path. I don't know about pathfinder, but I know in Wizards of the Coast. I mean, resort, or, uh, Forgotten Realms. All of this is accurate. None of this is wrong. I mean, I think it's a long <laughs> shot, right? I think it's a long shot that she's a dragon, but. I suppose if that's where you want to cast your lot, it might be might be valuable to think that she's a dragon. I mean, well, don't name yourself. What was it again? The 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 she the Soriana. Oh, Vissoriana? Yeah, don't so, call yourself Vissoriana if you don't want people to think you're a dragon. You need to name yourself like John. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Name Bill. yourself. <laughs> yeah, you need to name yourself Bill or something. You can't so, be like. So what does that mean for Peverin and Zokar? That they don't taste very good. <laughs> they obviously know, have something wrong with them. I don't know. They're still here. If, in, if well, anybody's got did, a, a flavor. We did learn some things about Pevrin and his father. You we did. learned about his mother, uh -huh. that Pevrin's mother is from the same place that our dear Rye is from. Yeah. And um, he didn't, the father did not seem willing to really talk about it much but perhaps we can get more information from him at another time. Why? Uh, out of game, what is what What speculation might you have for that? Well, his wife was from Nadal, so... Uh... I think she was probably a little cray-cray. Well, that's already going to be complicated. Just or... no matter what the story is there. Think of it as yeah. just step outside of the game for a moment and think, think as either a parent or someone with a child underneath them. Why wouldn't you want to talk about the death of your partner? Because they're being Pevrin's right there. He doesn't want to. Pe Pevrin's right there. Pevrin's right there. And yeah, if there's, the kid. I mean, or 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 they're being bitches. Yeah, that that's a that's a thing. I mean, I can't <laughs> I can't write off Ello's Ello's words here. There's that's a that's a thing. Yeah, yeah I guess I guess that's street about what we're saying in front of Pevrin. So yeah, we just we're treat like... him like a man, which is how yeah. it should be. No, uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I was trying to bring it up, but you're right. I, I guess he probably wouldn't want to talk about that in front of his 11 year old son. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or you know, she's totally sane and she's not crazy at all. All right. And maybe she just comes from a really fucked up place. All right. And maybe she's misunderstood. <sighs> and maybe the party thinks that, that she's evil and they shouldn't because people from the doll rock and we go through a lot so i'm definitely not talking about myself i'm still definitely <laughs> talking about pevrin's mom sure who's no longer with us he's totally sane totally. sure yes that's something else that gets uh it's, it's a small nuanced thing that i think people seem to lose track of right like I'm not sure what it's like in Australia, but I'm sure that you were able to identify people like via their location based off of dialect or some of their, their use of slang. But here in the States, very much the same thing. If someone like Southernisms, well, right? Southernisms. I get asked often, you know, as an Australian, can I do an American accent? I'm like, which one? Oh my God. There's a bunch. Yeah. And yeah. that's a thing in tabletop games as well, right? There, there are people from different locations that have uh, isms about them. Southernisms like, uh, my father is from Texas, so he has a lot of weird shit that he says because he was raised in Texas in the 60s and 70s. Um, and that happens in tabletop games more often than not, but I think that's something that goes very obviously missed. And that's what Pevrin picked up on. He said that Rye sounded a lot like his mom. There's there's some dialect there that I think would be fairly easily missed. 
So yeah, we've caught some similarities there. Peverin and Zokar have either history or story is particularly relating to Nadal. But what else do we have? Elephant in the room. There is still a spooky ghost lady there. Yeah, she's been there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we found out speak. that she can kind of travel in and out and do things that other ghosts can't. And so we actually sent her on a mission. She's got to go look at some files for us. Yes. She was the only one that wasn't tethered to uh, an unmoving in the world that Eli saw of all the souls she could move yeah. freely. She's sus. Ma, she, Ma, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know why she can move. Everybody else Dude, the way down. is looking for someone in Hearthstone. Maybe it's her. It might be the warden, the warden soul or yeah. something too. Because be like, yeah. how did he get down in the hole, or were they just like trying to lure her down by mimicking him somehow, or uh, the, the the lift, lift the lift to the lower uh, cells? Yeah. Like, how did he get down there, or was it was he actually down there, and maybe she just thought he was, she heard him, and was tricked somehow, or? Well, they said she went a little cuckoo, and then they put her in a room. Yeah, because she's she well, fire she happened, heard him. She couldn't get out of the room, so I don't know. I mean, she thought she, had, she thought she started it because she kicked oil barrels off off the lift as well. But mm -hmm. She didn't like see it like catch on fire somehow either. It didn't seem like so. It's not, I don't think it's a guarantee that she started the fire, but she seems to think she did because she kicked these oil barrels over. And, but yeah, I don't know about the, like, I don't know how the warden got down there or what the significance is, but. Yeah. What well, I know, or what Torvin thinks, is there is no reason why she would have been locked up for those reasons. Not there. For, yeah, why would enough. they put her? That's what I want to know. Like, why did they yeah. put her in a room? Yeah, it Locked sounds like. Well, one, down, the warden right has already lost control because I don't understand why the warden would say that. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to make a lot of it logical scare. sense. No. So, uh, and that also flips around to if all these spirits are being tethered, and she's not. What's the tether? And I think, really, that's actually what we're going to be looking at. Well, it seems like the the four. Uh serial killers or three three or four how many have we seen? there's been, been at least mention of three or four um mm, at least that many. they they yeah they they seem to be moving freely somewhat as well and she kind of verified that they come and go she said as well so they have a similar way of doing that and so does trip so maybe yeah. it's just something that kind of either made them all start being able to do that or maybe something was removed that kept them there or i'm not i'm not sure either something was added or taken away that changed them being stuck where they were i think mm. is the implication well peverin is one way yeah, he's a lantern right he could be attracting Ooh. he could also be a maybe they're looking for peverin because he's like the lantern mm. um and they need him maybe Maybe that's who they need. I didn't even think of that till now. Maybe that's that that a lot more sense. He's a so conduit. Hmm. Some theories, some good theories. They're definitely solid. I like it. I like where I you're said, going with it. A while ago, and you know, it's horrible to say, but if trips inside him, then nobody else can get inside him. So that's not optimal. But maybe we're but, actually doing the optimal thing. You know, depending. I think Trip is probably one of the spirits that has has sh been shown to be one of the least harmful so far mm. that we've encountered, aside from Vesoriana. But if we're all, we also don't trust her because she's not making sense logically, like with how it seems like as well. I, maybe we don't want her inside of him either, because if she, if she does have some ulterior motive or is in league with the evil spirit, she could just possess him and walk his ass into the prison. And then boom, like he's gone, you know, for whatever they want to use that for. For sure. Um, so I don't know. Some good theories. They're not, I don't think you guys are, are far off the mark. Um, why, not necessarily in Peverin's case, but why was 
why is she attracted not in like not in like a sexual sense but to like the living why particularly your lot and why Peverin? what about the living she said which made I remember some she said she could touch us yeah feel yeah. us but everything she just passes through everything else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah there was did she say anything particular about Peverin being a uh, uh, the lantern so to speak being a conduit yeah she kind of reiterated what we knew already she said that she she was able to feel and live that they that yes. they could live through him yes. basically but someone already he, was inhabited in his body him. which is trip we're assuming mm -hmm. so something what if his mom tries to take over his body oh That'd be his creepy. own dead mother who well, we don't know what happened to her she might not even her like be resting there yeah. She died somewhere else. She might have done something to him. Maybe. With him, because she is from the doll. So who knows She's what kind of... From the she doll. might have had that, and then when she had her kid, he now inherited the there ability. There you go, yeah. Yeah, could be that. I mean, it could be... Yeah. The connection to an adult through the mom means, like, pretty much anything is open. Sure. Honestly. Sure. Yeah, that's that's good. I like I like the theories so far. They're pretty good. They're pretty solid. Let's talk about visions. But there was drama. The drama. That there were some visions. Yeah. Yeah, Eli saw some creepy shit. Mm hmm Well, uh when he showed up. Temerity cat tried to cast some magic on my my brand new eyeball and uh then it went all wild, and but you know what? We didn't get the darkest timeline. We got to reroll that, so it could have Lucky. gone way worse. Lucky. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the the reroll there last week. I saved us. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't doing that again. <laughs> yeah. So instead, we rolled that it activated my eye. Uh, the, the magical item that it was being cast on got activated, which I don't think Bubs was like even expecting to do or no. happen. So. <laughs> It was totally like improv, I think, that whole session almost, which is incredible because I thought it was really actually like rich and full of details. So just like props for, for being awesome like that to be able to do that. But um, it, it basically like made it where it was a split vision of one was like a soul realm, um, like, a, like a soul dimension or like the afterworld kind of from the sense that I got where I could see like a, a sea of souls, thousands of them tethered like to the ground and they couldn't they couldn't move and then i could also see my own soul and everybody like the living people around me yeah and what they looked like as well and not everybody looked the same can everybody recall what they looked like spirit like their their soul the, the that inhabited their body can you recall what it looked like i think i had like um like armor around mine yeah i had a magical arcane arcane glimmer yeah. Mine what? sort of seeped into the ground was larger. <sighs> Damn dwarves, man. Having that uh that barrel chested soul. And what about Rye? <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. remember what That's my soul looks like. That's where the drama starts. I don't remember what my soul looks like because apparently I don't have one. So Oopsie You don't have doodle. one. You have fourteen, so yeah, you I have won 14. the lottery fractions of a soul that are being glued together to make a soul for me. Are they being glued uh, together, or are they, they just holding on I, for your dear uh, life? I <laughs> seems I like would they're like giving to... their light, their souls for to create your one soul. That's yeah. what I got from it. That's what Ghost Lady said. I, I heard mean, the word vacuous. Uh, so vacuous, uh, like a vacuous like hole with uh, with souls basically tethered tethered together to keep it alive, on the, like almost so. Uh, it's like a black hole with like a shell around it almost is, is what, the, what I gathered from it basically man I, I, I don't know what to say like uh, it's kind of just like living in New York you know oh, God. it's like that's just <laughs> that's just uh, you know sometimes you walk in you don't have a soul all right you just you just don't have a soul anymore it's like Nadal I don't know where I misplaced it I don't know what could have happened but like <laughs> That's like a regular Friday night. You know, yeah, I lost my soul. I'm from Nadal. What do you want? 
I don't know. <laughs> it's comprised of 14, you know, uh, children that seem to be cool with, you know, propping Which, me up. That might be why we're getting different names for the alias instead of like what what we were assuming was you're just trying to cover your identity up. Maybe you just can't pick which little freaky kid you know you're, you're you are at any given time. Or are you trying to say a... that I'm split? <laughs> are you trying to say that that Rai is split? I mean, you uh, would it be like a far reach to assume that your aliases might have been names of one of your 14 souls, even if you weren't doing it on purpose and you thought you were just covering your your name up? That's kind of creepy. What a twist! I mean, that is uh, that is quite a theory. I, I I will say that that's quite a theory. Because I've heard three names so far already. Well, you know, uh, or it could just be that, you know, being from Nadal, not very many people leave. And if you leave, you change your name. It's, Nadal's not a place that, like, See, they they are, they want you to leave or travel. Or, like, when you're there, you stay. You're not just given free reign to just move around. So problem, if you do get out of there, you, yeah, it might benefit you to change your name, you know? Maybe you dye your hair, grow a beard. What's that? Hey, you're bringing all these mites and maybes. You know, you might want to mm. change your name. You might I think we're all bringing mites, mites and maybes. Right. It and might be Hotel California. definite 14 different souls. Like, well, let's just define that as an actual thing as opposed to this maybes discussion. And then we'll stick with the facts that there are 14 souls. What the hell, man? Oh, it's right. I know what it meant. What it meant. It's an abomination. I think everybody also realized in game, even if they didn't know what exactly it meant, but they realized that Rai knew what it meant because it takes a lot to stimulate uh, someone as 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 cold and or callous as Rai to tears. Mm. Right. You can tell, like, he's not easily shaken, but in that moment when he said that there were fourteen souls gripping on to your body to hold you together. That, that, uh, okay. that was big. That was, um, it was a pretty momentous moment, I think. Personal opinion, of course. I don't know how it landed with everybody else, though. We'll see how everybody feels about it. Obviously, it's turned some of them against me. Yeah, so, so yeah, Eli, Eli <laughs> saw that and he got friend, very upset. So, you know? <laughs> you guys are We're in a BFFs. secret club. I'm just saying all I did was walk downstairs and I had a hammer pointed at me, which is the medieval equivalent to a shotgun. And I was trying I, to calm everybody down. You did? You did. I listen, Rai knows what's up. All right. Yeah, I got between you and everybody. I like stood between you. It's true. Yeah. I was, ar I was you arrived did. because you, you did. heard people you did. screaming. That's true. Yeah. It would have been a four or a, it would have been a three, a, no, a four versus one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I it decided three versus to, two. To, to, to try to take Rai out. So, yeah, I don't know about where Torben's on. Them. <laughs> I, don't right. think, I don't know about that. Watch 3v1v1. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 1v1v3. One one Yes. Yeah. Right. And then the ghost just is kind of watching, like, what the ghost fuck? has a whistle. This whole town is destroyed. <laughs> like, like Every, they're watching everybody, this unfold. Everybody looked about how, you know, Eli would have expected until he looked at Rai. Even like Eli had like a holy fire uh, type soul and runes of like Torag, you know, uh, you know, and embroidered on him and stuff. But uh, when he saw that, it, it kind of like shook him a little bit because he already knew he was evil. But he didn't expect him to not have like a normal human soul. So then, when he doesn't understand, like what, what, what are you? What, like what? You're not. This isn't like a, a normal thing. It's not natural. Then he's like, I maybe I should kill him right now. Maybe he's like a, a danger to everybody. And so he had like a, a you know a come to God uh, moment, literally, where he was praying out loud for a sign. And he got a sign. Um, his his right hand started kind of heating up and and uh, not burning to the point of like like pain, but um, yeah. And then as soon as he started lowering his hammer and saying like you know I'm not the one that's going to judge you right now, it it like melted away. Kind of it kind of reminded me of like when you take like a hot piece of metal and you're like cooling it like in a barrel of like water, you know, sure. like a. Uh, yeah, like a like a cooling. So he thinks that his god's like, or at least one of the messengers of his god is like, you need this guy. He's gonna like be important and more valuable alive than 
and dead. But everybody thinks he's batshit crazy because of his his evil cursed eyed thing. I don't know, man. I, I you know, I was speculating about this, and I think of all of the people in the party, I think that at the very least, Oz has the most of an idea of what's happened. Having looked through that planchette multiple times and seeing some of the most bizarre or kooky shit. Look, it didn't break my face. True. To start. Yeah. True. Yeah. But I also have really high willpower. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, my willpower is good too, but apparently when you're worshiping one god, they don't like when you're using the other god's toys. You know, like... I mean... So, <laughs> uh, so question though. How does um, Eli see himself now, knowing, like, looking down and seeing probably the soul that... Like, because you always have to exist on a little bit of faith, right? Like, and you yeah. look down, you see this soul that's really, like solidify like do you need your faith anymore or do you now you know he (laughs) feels better in the fact that he didn't mess up so bad that it's got abandoned him obviously since he's still like at the holy fire and the mark you know torag on his soul but at the same time like he's i was talking with bubs about this earlier but this is like his first time out as a paladin yeah since he kind of came upon his powers because he's been where he comes from he's uh just been like an apprentice under a master you know dwarven blacksmith who's been raising him his whole life so he's kind of like just being thrown out into the wild and to his own devices to kind of trying to to figure things out and also put into like uh affect the teachings basically he's been brought up with so far yeah you like young yeah he's he's relatively young in in comparison like you're you're what 20 dwarf especially yeah how, how old are you in game? You're 20... Uh, 30. You're 30. Yeah, 30, right on the, the money. And your your teachers are are dwarves that are probably in their 200s, 300s. So you are still effectively a baby to these mm-hmm. to these dwarves. So yeah, your your tutelage has, has taken pretty much the duration of your life, of which you said that you basically wound up with them when you were about four, 13, 14 years old. Yeah, and young. So that's that's like no time flat. That's a blink of an eye to a dwarf. Uh, so yeah, this is it's honestly it's like it's like like I said to to you then it's like baby's day out. You are experiencing the world as your first mission of a paladin, your first official mission, and it's something that you took upon yourself, not even a call. Yeah. So he's not sure how to deal with a lot of the stuff going on. He's just trying to figure out using his teachings. Like, all right, gotta figure it out. Uh, but um, I, I de- he definitely was worried, but he t- it, it, there is some solace in the fact that, you know, hey, my soul's still here, but I also don't know what to do about this evil guy. Sure. And um, uh, on top of that, um, he, he feels better, but he still thinks he's cursed because his the, the his eye is is obviously not natural now, and it was like, and it's. And it was imbued with that, not only that, but it was imbued in a way that he thinks displeased his God, right? Sure. So to him, like, to me, it's like, as a player, it's like, oh, that's really cool. He's got this cool extra ability that he can use that's unique. But as the player, he's like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Like, my eye's cursed. I don't want to piss my God off. Like, what am I going to do about this kind of thing? A double-edged sword. I like it. I think it's going to breed very, very strong narrative very good story I'm, I'm super super excited about it i kind of want to know where temerity is falling in all of this all things considered there's a lot on the table what's happening well, with temerity i mean other than the fact that everything's a little bit she's used to weird so it's not really phasing her all that much right um she is starting to be more and more convinced like she was convinced there was something to look at in the the prison and she's willing to wait for everybody to kind of come to that conclusion but at the like that was part of why i think it was me i don't remember suggested or her suggested to the ghost like hey go get those records because we now like this has now come to a point where we need to investigate this right like this is a good group of people and she will like 
she she likes them but she also knows that having being there with them will um get her where she needs to be to um just slaughter the undead mercilessly um beneath her feet <laughs> so she's really i mean that's real she's just kind of biding her time okay. at this point like hey no everything's good like these are good people let's let them like if we could build a team out of out of this group and go forward and and do what i what she needs to do um because that's her, you know, above all else focus, right? Like, this is all well and good, but at the end of the day, if there's undead in there, they have to die. Mm. So she's kind of like, I'm good with the fun and levity and weirdness and this and that because it is a, it's getting us somewhere else. And she's kind of waiting for that somewhere else with a, you know, let's just learn who everybody is while we get there. <laughs> How does Temerity feel I mean, knowing that what your your title, what your job is, how does Temerity feel right now, particularly about this Oriana? Well, that was part of, excuse me, part and parcel of the question I asked you last week, which is ghost versus undead, right? Sure. So personally, I think the way I'm interpreting it is, is they're definitely two different entities, right? Like undead for me is like corporeal, like it's a thing. It's a reanimated. Yeah. Weird like actual thing like this, almost like zombie -esque. sure um so she thinks that that the ghost is like is a tool that they can use to to get more information and maybe to help them while they're in there right so she has no problem currying favor and you know befriending she doesn't like a trip getting or anyone getting possessed because again that's an undead someone who's not alive in a body and so that it kind of mixes those two but um if Peverin's still alive in all of this she's willing to tolerate it this is how i've this is my self-justification of sure. why i'm not like killing people on the spot um mm. there are a lot of lines right, that yeah. you, you guys have to do that right like like rai is is he has yet to raise a hand to actually fight anyone but there have been a couple of really tense moments um with with his own party like i feel like there's been almost more threats with the party than with with outward forces uh which i think is super interesting and we're seeing the same thing with eli like he's calling into question a lot of his his teachings similarly with temerity there is a lot going on that sort of skirts that line of is this right is this wrong does my alignment sort of fall into this it's a kind of a morally gray area and i think that's the coolest part about tabletop gaming it's because you set these parameters for these realistic emotional and driven individuals, and then you skirt that line of like, what do I do? What do I do here? How do I feel? And I think that makes for good narrative. Yeah, there's been, especially last last session, there was like a moment where I'm like, like, all right, like I'm just, I'm gonna have to fight Eli. Like, I'm just gonna have to, like, and I, I almost, like, I can't tell you how close I was to, to being like, all right, here we go. You know, like we're doing it. Me too. It. I was like, looking it, for a like, reason not to. <laughs> I mean, I, like I, I, uh, I, I mean, it's just such an awkward scene to come down to. You know, like imagine you just got done putting back something you know you're you know is going to get found out. Like you're you're doing your own sneaky thing, right? And then you come down and you've got a hammer pointed at you. The last thing you want to do is because you could very easily be like, I didn't steal it. You know, <laughs> it's like uh, you have no idea. They're like peering into your lack of a soul, you know. And uh, so he was a little taken back and he's trying to like get his composure. But Eli was saying some real some real uh, critical things. So it, it it's uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I envisioned him a little more hot tempered. Uh, but I don't know. I feel like this group has softened, well, softened him up a lot, too. I also think that Rise all about survivability, right? And when you're, oh. uh, when you're, uh, I'm not, are you I'm about to insane. talk some mad shit right now? Are you about to talk about some from, mad shit? From a statistical character standpoint, I have the advantage. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you can talk. <sighs> there was like, there was that outward thinking of like, oh shit, I look crazy now, don't I? And then the monologue of, these fuckers are gonna kill me. If yeah. I fucking if I if I levy this hammer at him, they are gonna kill me. And well, I can, but just by the way they were talking to me, like they're trying to defend him, and I'm like, 
dude, he's he's the pro he's the one. Get him. Like <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm the only one that thinks I'm sane. Well, you know, that's that. that's how uh, you know the the um smartest of us survive, right? All the others around us, they just feel like we're simpletons and we don't get it. We're not on that level. Maybe they'll maybe they'll come to agree with you. The real rye eat dog world out there. And uh, the real rye eat dog world out there, yeah. And I'll right. try to eat dog and chat be horrified yeah. the world out there. We'll uh, we'll we'll see who's gonna make it out alive. They're just lucky there wasn't a baby out there. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> what yeah, does the rain that mean? You're not helping your case. I'm it's not like, helping anyone's case. Oh, Rye like, defends himself. This is hell on a He's not helping Rye's either. <laughs> ve veal, but people. It's okay. Yeah, I'm not here to protect Rye. All right. I'm just here to play him. Veal, all. but people. <laughs> Veeple. All right. I might be on I might be on board for it. I'm not sure yet. Veeple. Veeple. Might be on board. Yeah. Who knows, man? Survival's weird. I'm following the, 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 the Rye line of thinking. Who knows? Might be the worst case scenario for me, but we'll figure it out. I'm just kidding, right? We kill a baby <laughs> in the in the rain. I mean, now, an infant, maybe, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, once they're past six months, then it's <laughs> oh, <crazy Lord>. game, <laughs> so basically a crone. But never crone before man. six months. I have I have morals. Okay, yeah. I don't do some things. Perfect. That's what I like hearing. So let's uh let's kick off today's shenanigans. The session ended with Vesoriana leaving. You had asked her to assist. She didn't know if she was able to find or to lift those files particularly for you, but she said that she would try. Mm. And the session ended with the five of you, well, technically six, seven, eight of you, including Peverin, Zokar, and Kendra in the kitchen. You were enjoying some new trialed wolf balls Barbecue flavor. Yeah, barbecue flavor. That's right. His own his own mix of concoctions, various chili seasonings and and honey, some smoked chips, something that was different for him. And it seemed to land pretty well with everyone else. I think Torvin had a bowl or five. Seemed to are, we well. <laughs> no, are we dead? No, not dead. Are we dead? No, you, everybody wakes up attached to uh, the end of a metal case, just anything and he's raided all of your person you have nothing on you anymore sorry <laughs> so call you scamp what have you done we wake up hither to harris though yep dude that wasn't even his son it was a long con yep it's like match <laughs> match stick he's... man or something oh my god <laughs> see him the next day and his, the kid's got like a beard and he's like a grown <laughs> yeah he's like 25. <laughs> so i've got a i've got a no out of tanners will believe anything. Do you guys let Peverin go back home with his dad? I mean, that's up to that's up to Zark Zarkov. Zarkov. I would try to talk him Zarkov. out of it. Okay. For sure. Okay. But it is up to I. At the end of the day, if Dad's like, no, I would rather the boy came home. I don't think that I would make a big deal out of it because that seems even more sus, right? Like, no, your son has to sleep here. For reasons yeah, okay haunted mansion of death let's, blood wolf beds let's uh let's open open this up then with um whomever would like to lead that conversation the night is wrapping up it's very very late for all intents and purposes zokar's tired and we as a group want pepperin to stay due to the situation do you right it I might just so. be it might just be a lot of extra trouble it's definitely Eli harder. Feels like his opinion doesn't matter with the oh. rest of the group, so you guys can make a consensus. Aww. What? Whoa! Oh, now we're playing the victim. Okay, <laughs> you really are religious. No, I'm just he's kidding. In the corner, he's in the corner he's crying in his, his wolf ball bowl. <laughs> oh man, gushing in the corner. Um, Rai is has from the beginning been very passive about Peverett. I mean. To maybe show him a few things but whether he's along for the ride or not uh i don't think rye cares very much because he knows he's not going to be taking care of him okay even though you saved his life once already even though he's in like um centipedes 
a, a vessel for a ghost that we know, I don't know, knows their way around this haunted prison that we might want to go into. Wait, Wait are, we, are we taking line. an eleven-year-old to the prison? It oh, could just, see, it could just hey, be your little oh torch Oh my god, this is the kind of outside can, the box and, thinking Rye loves. Yeah, if let's If I wasn't take a paladin, kid. I would use him as bait if I was anybody else. Like, <laughs> if I wasn't a paladin. Else. I don't want to Lanterns. Mean. Prison's probably dark. This She said he was a lantern. So I'm like, not that's... lawful good. Let's go. <laughs> Prison's dark. Well. Said he was a lantern. Oh, man. <laughs> love it. Hate it, but I love it. Ryan is deep in thought about Eli right now. He's not even thinking about okay. Everin. All right. I, I'm just asking out of character, not as sure. like, out of character. Is everyone in agreement that we want to keep the child with yes. us? Yeah. You I guys mean, do yeah, whatever the smart and, people want to do in the group. <laughs> yes. I think we should keep him with us for now. Yeah, okay. I, I would agree we, with we, that. If we're going to the prison, we should to keep him with us. If well, we're just staying overnight and going to sleep and waking up, aren't we? Then going to we the prison. We don't know what Bubs is gonna do to us. They're a meteor gonna the house. We like <laughs> Man. Well, all right, but nonetheless, we we're going to bed. Maybe what we do is we, at, right after whatever, like the dad leaves, to, to Zokar leaves, we have this conversation because I think that we can make this. Because honestly, in character, that's her thinking. If this kid can be possessed by the ghost of a former prisoner, that's like a walking map. Or a walking liability. Sure. Yeah, that's what I'm or a walking murder machine that we can't Maybe trust when we go to sleep. I'm not worried about <laughs> that part. That true. Easily. Like, we can easily um, uh, hold person or something like that. I'm hold just... person? We don't got Kendra to surround holding people. I don't know. You don't know what I took for my some next Some of spell. us leveled up right. and got some things. But so. I also know that half the spells you try to cast aren't the ones that come out. So Okay, so fair. <laughs> okay, so fair. <laughs> You might try to cast oh, that. As far as I'm concerned, you all can stop with the spells. Like, just all of you. That, that's not. <laughs> Until he gets oh, access yeah. to spells, of course, then it's it's a whole different story. <laughs> this yeah, right. I doesn't like any of that shit, but I can set I some. Know. I can set ease to some minds so far. I will let everybody know that the session has already started. There is no wild magic. You do not have to worry about that this session. Woohoo! Problematically, we have no luck rerolls yet. <laughs> it's no. okay. I'm negative two anyway. <laughs> right. So we need at least two. He made a bargain with the GM to reroll his HP, just so you all know. Listen, uh, what you guys didn't see is, after like before the stream, I, I had to roll HP, be a one. and I I get the rule is that I get to roll it, and then if I don't like it, I can get up to two rerolls, but I have to abandon the last number. So of course I get like a four, and then like a three. Or it was a three and a four, a two and a four, and I'm like, well, fuck it, I'm gonna roll. And of course, I get a one on my last roll. So of course, I go into bargaining mode. <laughs> I'm scrambling over here, <laughs> and I bargain back. And and the bargain was struck, and I thought it was a very fair deal that I would lose out on on two luck rolls immediately during the session, so I could get another roll. And I rolled, and I of course got a six. So. Not it's not all terrible, but yeah, there was uh, there was some backdoor dealings happening. I thought it would be fair for chat to understand what's going on. So yeah, <laughs> well, that cheater. Half of your, <laughs> half of your, your, Thank you. your first luck roll. And Sloth came in with five, five more, and you guys get your first luck roll, you. which would be great. Well, well, thank you. Sloth, thank you. One thank quarter. You. We're gonna I don't, probably need it. I don't want to add a layer of confusion to this, but I am gonna mention that. We still have not used one of those siphons. We did. Oh, siphon, no, we did not use the siphon. The, we have had those things for fucking forever and encountered many ghosts, many go more than two episodes. I don't We've had know those things for them. like five episodes or oh, something. Those, those, the ciphers weren't in, I mean, we had them, but I don't think we knew about them until two episodes ago, right? Yeah. We yeah, had them from the, the crypt. The, yeah, but we didn't know. Yeah, but we didn't know what they were. Ago. And only a few of you know, cause like Oz, doesn't know i'm just only saying you were part of that we we got this thing and there's been there's been ghosts around and we got little pevrin he's a little conduit for ghosts mm. maybe we just try opening one up and see what happens if we lose trip yeah. 
Uh, I can I can eat ghosts right. now too. Yeah. Eat is that the uh, I hope can that be the official name of the spell? Eat uh, ghost. ghost lay on yeast. Lay on yeast. Lay on yeast. For what Bub said. That's a whole different spell. Yeah. One, one of one of my do. um. It is some wild lays, magic. It's a it's about the same as a haunt siphon is what he said. Um. Hey. One of my lays. Jen, thank you so much. That's uh, yeah, two luck yeah. rerolls. You there are you officially bought. You just, we have it. You guys have two luxury rolls. So Elo is officially bought out of his uh, his luxury roll debt. Oh my God! Thank Elo's you. Elo's out of debt. That's yep. I'm a free man. He's back at zero, folks. <laughs> to re-roll nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just back normal again, which is a if, celebration. Uh, if Vesoriana shows back up, <laughs> might do some eating. I don't it's know. It's true. It's true. He has lay on hands, which uh, offers as a heal. But he can use that to damage undead as well. Hey. So it's it's, it's pretty good. You can do five a day. Pretty, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's pretty important. I mean, yeah, if she's gonna, that's in character. I'll stop. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, uh, Riot probably wouldn't suggest using any evil magic or any magic item, uh, but. As Elaheim, I'm saying, like, we probably should try to use one of those at some point. Like, before we're in the heat of the moment and we have no idea what it does, it seems I'll like a, it kind of a safe environment, maybe. So Mary now. should know how to use it, though. I know, I know what it does. I don't know that I know how to use it. I think uh, it was described as something that was a little deeper than I usually know, but, or at, at my level, but I kind of was familiar with it, is I think what it was. That's what my. I don't know. That's just my suggestion. I think we should probably fuck if we with go that to Harrowstone, we... I'm sure there'll be. I want to go to Harrowstone. Like, that's where I, I might mentally, yeah, that's we where need I want to go. go to Harrowstone. Yes, we do. Yeah, but we need to know what we have before we go. Like, for well, sure. We got the name yeah. of a smith, too, I, as well. I need to go talk to Jaminda. Shit, y'all got, got lots, lots to do. Yeah, and <laughs> someone, a couple people are going to go to the church. I know there's a lot of things we're going to do, and then we're going to go to Harrowstone. So, so okay. let's make, make a there. list. And we can divide and conquer, or yeah. we just make like we're I just have taking the hobbits to Isengard. One of the two, like we either have the spread or like. I love it. Well, let's start first <clears throat> with this dialogue with Zokar. Zokar okay. steps away from the table, very clearly seeing that his 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 cook pot has been emptied. Quite surprised, he brought food enough for twelve. Oz tugs on. Temerity's cloak and then like motions his head over to Zokar and waddles his way out of his chair towards Zokar as well. well come on boy come on get your things be on our way soon yes dad Pefren steps out of the room my accent now Miles what was I gonna say all right um, I was like, I gotta get into this accent. It's a little strange. Um, Oz walks over and kind of motions if uh, Zokar doesn't notice him, I guess, at first. But if he does pay, t pay notice to him, he'll speak up. Zokar actually doesn't take notice. He's He's gone so much into the into the mode of, of like business for him. So part of the cooking, the post is clean up. So he's like collecting people's bowls. Um, pulling any like any flatware or anything that he can to, to oh, try. Oh, to... Oz will help. Oz will start grabbing some of it and be like, uh, as as we both make our way over to the sink. I'm assuming is where he's headed. Yeah. Um, Oz will say, "Well, that will, those were some mighty fine uh, wolf balls, there, sir." Well, thank you. Uh, I'm just glad it was a hit. I was worried that it wouldn't do so well, and uh, well now I feel pretty good. I think I can take it into uh, into business with me. Well, everybody likes some spicy meatballs. Yeah. And they weren't too spicy, though, were they? No, not for me. I mean, there are some people who can't handle their spices, that's for sure. Head Chef Earl, well, he has a name for those, but we just don't say that very often. And not around them, especially. He's not really sure what to make of that. Um, he doesn't He doesn't know you as a, as a cook. Um, so you kind of surprise him a little bit. Head, head chef. You're, you're... Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Um, How long I, you been I cooking? work with him. Been cooking for a mm-hmm. while. Well, just a little bit. It's been something I do when I'm in between work. Well, um, maybe you come by sometime and show me, uh, some recipes. I, I, forgive me. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know many of your kind. And I, I'm not oh, sure what the, right. the proper food is for. Well, I eat anything you eat. As I saw you, you devoured it. But, um, I understand, uh, a lot of folks, well, they're not sure what to think of me when they see me, so I understand. But, I'm just like you, I like eating a good meal, especially one home-cooked. Well, if there's one thing I've, I've, I've learned to know, it's that I can trust my stomach, and I know others got stomachs too. I agree. He pats his stomach and it jiggles a little bit. Um, I can trust the hungry ones. Says, Unfortunately, there are some things that my stomach just can't fix. Um, that's what uh, we were wanting to speak with you about, sir. If you don't mind chatting a little off to the side here. What, we? And kind of peers around to see what everybody else is doing. Are, are others like uh, looking his way? I kind of. I, I've been watching. To... Yeah, he. Since Oz poked me, I'm kind of watching him and listening. I'll approach with Oz. Kind of come to his side. Well, what... What's... What's the matter? What's the problem? Well... I think we should be honest with him. Temerity. Um... I'll let her tell you. Oh, that's that's fun. Um, it's I mean, well, <laughs> there's not really an easy way to say this, but um, and is Pepperin in the room with us? No, Pepperin's. He's you kind of hear him. He went to go running about his grabbing his things. Well, your son's something that's uh, commonly referred to as a vessel, um, or I don't know what it's called. Different things for different people, basically. Um, that that odd behavior we are now fairly sure now we can attribute it to um, um, a, a ghost um, inhabiting him and we think that we need to uh, I know this could be shocking so you can feel free to sit if you'd like but we think that we can help him um, we think we can help him but he's fine. The ghost wasn't... I don't know, Oz, how would you describe the ghost? <laughs> well, I think she just needs help. I think they all do. Well, and that's what we're here I... to do. We're trying to figure out what's going on. The other help ghost. your town. The other ghost. The one that inhabits the boy. I didn't want... I told him this is we're being honest, right? right. So we want to make sure we got to start at the beginning. He his eyes kind of trace over to to the uh, the others in the room. Is anybody else well, doing anything? Or are you just kind of like head down? Be that honest? Yeah, but... I'm just sort of eating head down. Like I'm listening to Temerity explain this like a like a bad doctor who has to explain like somebody has IBS. Like, oh no. Okay, uh, check in the charts here, and uh, it's not going to be good news. It's not terrible. <laughs> First uh, of all, but your son is a conduit for ghosts. And not like IBS. Let's, there's some pills you can doctor. take for that. There's, uh, you know, some. I'm just, uh, I don't know. Yeah, Rai is uh, listening, but is not sure. But he also thinks Demerity is like way smarter than him, so he's not going to question it. It's the big C. Condu it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eli's already said too much tonight. So okay. So he's just uh, <laughs> just observing right now. And sure. It, it, okay. He's happy that the attention is not on him. We, like we're like eating across from each other, <laughs> just staring at each yeah. other. Like all angry <laughs> while everybody else is like talking about the right. reservoir design. Give you a wink with my bad eye. <laughs> oh, you, you can't tell if you're just falling asleep. Yeah. So I mean, really, the uh, well, I mean, it, it was a, it was a very, it was a, 
a ghost that was a uh, elf named That's Trick. Where you're with this, you're this gonna go what, with. He you was said a... honest. I, um, there's no. I don't have it all written down, sir. Your son was possessed by a ghost, and we think that we can help him. But I don't know that bringing him home will be where that help resides. I think what we mean is that we think he'd be best if he stayed here so we can keep an eye on him. Zoker. You're welcome to probably stay as well. I'm sure we could talk to Kendra about it. Oh, I mean, yeah, why not? You're just housing more people. <laughs> or Kendra still is probably freaked out from earlier. We still have to talk to her. Or like got her thoughts yeah. on it. Or what, anything. She was eating, Kendra's she just was like, I'm glad I'm not blind. And yeah, you like anymore. literally, you were like, boom, Helen Keller, go. And then she was just <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> And then you're like, you're good now, right? You're going to see. Pretty girl, pretty girl. And then you walked away. I didn't know what was going on. I just wanted to knock her out before she started screaming. Yeah. She's she's having a a bit of a rough way. So So um, you can house more people, right? Can't you? You're still dumbfounded from earlier and beyond speech. So you can't disagree. All right. Come on in, Zarkov. Good. (laughs) Look. Call him a different name every time. It's my favorite. <laughs> Man, listen, a D&D names, names when it comes to these things. I'm sorry. I can't keep up with, like, regular, like, Tims and Freds. <laughs> all right? And Bills, like, in real life. Then you're throwing Zark, Zarkon Z- at me it, okay. and it's Vesuvius Z- and it's all Zokar, these other. Right? It's Zokar. Zokar. Okay. And I remember that for the worst reason. So. No one messes with the Zokar. No, Is it's that... the name of the Boston Marathon bomber. Oh, wow. Wow. Didn't know that. It, yes, it's a much different spelling, but it's Zokar. <laughs> wow. Really? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. The only camera. reason I remember it every time. Wow. <laughs> Damn. Well, now, okay. I'm, now, if I forget it, I'm going to feel like a huge asshole. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, Zokar stands uh, for a while before just. Letting out this exasperated sigh of... (sighs) Well... I knew it was going to come eventually. I just didn't expect it to be so soon. What? What do you mean? Excuse me, sir, come again. I'm gonna he, grab a chair real quick and like turn it backwards and like sit like, he, like yeah Michelle Pfeiffer uh, or, or that yeah just like whoop whoop like sweep the coat back just like this sounds awesome. Oz he, looks concerned. I'm concerned, but inside I'm very excited. <laughs> he waits a few moments. He can see that everybody's like you're you're at the very least. Um, you are you're sort of. Cursed waiting, and he collects he collects his things, and um, he hollers for Bev- Bevron boy, and he he arrives. Yes, Dad. Take take the things, go home, right away. Is everything okay, Dad? Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Wait in your mother's room. Am I in trouble? No, you're fine. You're fine. Just hurry back now. And he hands him this this deep cook pot he waits for the door to close you can hear it close and you hear the the feet as it runs off of the the porch the the deck itself well i guess that answers that question yeah but this is i want to know what what's next zokar sort of leans back uh putting his his like his his ass against the the still where the the wash water is and um he looks over to you uh, Torvin sees that you have a, a series, almost like a bandolier of, of smokes, and he asks if you have uh, if you have a spare pipe, anything for a moment. I, I um, I forage around and get him my my backup. Sure. He'll take to the pipe and um, burn down to the tinderbox and and take a long draw off of it, uh, before he just kind of sits back and he says. Pavrin's mom. 
She was from Nidal. I heard it when you came in, reminding me of her. And it kind of looks to you, right? I don't think ill of the people of Nidal. But I don't know what it's like there. I'm not from Nidal, but my wife was. And wasn't really much of a marriage. She was quirky. I always thought she was different. But I'd, I didn't really know. And she told me things about Nidal. Nightmares. Horrible things. She talked about these people who lived un, under a large dark disc. She called them mum, mumbers or something. And she fled. Is he trying to say um, umbral? Yeah. Okay. We met in a different town, a different place, about a little over 11 years ago, 12. And she was the most beautiful thing. I'd seen a lot in the world, a lot of people, but I'd never met anyone like her. Things were difficult at first. You know, with uh, the butterflies. You're willing to buy anything that anyone's selling. And she told me things about, well, ghosts. And I always thought that they were hmm, tales. Children's tales, mostly. And, well, until I experienced it, it was, it was a shock, you could say. I watched her eyes turn colors. I went from sky blues to dark browns, darker in mud. Her lips turned to blue. She looked like a dead woman. And she talked with a different voice. One said, no, it wouldn't hurt. Wouldn't even in her, in her range. It sounded like a man. Scared me. Had to change my pants. It was a terrible night. And I didn't think much of another. Soon, she was, well, we were with baby. We had a pevrin. But let's not misunderstand. It's not, it's not my proudest moment. We had yet to lay together. I raised Pevrin as if he were my own, but he's not my boy. Not blood anyway. And she never wanted to talk about who his dad was. But she said that she escaped Nidal. Not that she went away because she wanted, but that she escaped. And she told me many, many months later that she was a conduit. And that she was afraid that her boy or her child would be the same, be a conduit as well. And well, I sh sure, many people thought she was crazy. They did. They did. They said terrible things about her, but I didn't care. I didn't care what any of them said. She loved me, and she was pure. She had hair like the moonlight. And Pevrin, he's a wonderful boy, much smarter than me. He learns so fast. Oh. Sorry for your loss. I can't imagine losing somebody you love like that. I've only gotten butterflies once from someone. It's hard. But we're making the most of it out of here. He teaches me about me every day, and I teach him about what it means to be a good person. He's his own man at this point. He might be wee, but he'll be big. And then he can make all of his own choices and his own rules. But what did you say your your wife's name was? 
I didn't. Mind sharing it? I do. She asked me to never say her name. She said that if she were ever come from, or if anyone were ever come from Nadal, that they would want Peverin. If they knew her real name. And she only told me her real name. The date she died. And she made me promise not to tell anyone. Well, a promise is a strong thing, so I understand. Thank you. More just wanted to make sure that we're able to protect you and your son. We have... We have a room. Back at home, it's not a very large room, but... Before she went, before her mind was lost. It's... It's a bit twisted. It's not right. But it's the only way to keep him out. He will stay in the room. If I ask him to. And so long as someone... Something doesn't come inside that's stronger than me. Or faster than me. I'll push him in the room. And... What does she say? She said some words. The only... Only one I know is, she said it would evict, whatever that means. It was to push him out or something. Oh. <clears throat> but for now, I'll, I'll, I'll put Peverin in the room. It's not very comfortable, not very large, but it'll do. Um, Rai speaks up and looks at, uh, I keep wanting to say Zarkov, that's not it. Uh, Zokar. Zokar, thank you, Zokar. Yes, I forgot already. Um, looks up at Zokar and says, It's really difficult to leave Nadal. Did your wife ever mention how she did it? She said some names. I don't remember them, but I wrote them down. I think, I think someone snuck her out. Wait, did he just say he wrote him down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to have that list still? It's, it's all, it's all pushed away in some of our old things. But I, well, like I could, I could find it. I know it's, it's, it's tucked away somewhere. I'm. I don't like to throw things away, especially if it reminds me of her, so I could find it. It might take me a day or so, but I think so. Might be useful to look through her things. I, I will, I'll, I'll do that then. Is there a reason why? You never know when it comes to Nadal might be important, might not mean anything, but it's worth a look if it's going to potentially help us understand what's going on with your son. And not just your son, what's going on with this town? Right, well... And, and what's going on with this town might need your son to help figure it out. So pushing him in a room might not be the best thing for him. Never mind for the rest of the residents of this town. Just something to think about. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your boy. Or even ask you. It's your call. Is there anything more about the day that he saw Pet Petros die that you're not telling us? Not to my knowledge, no. Not I've not have thought about it much. I don't really think about that it's sort of traumatic wouldn't be the would be the first time that he said he's seen someone that way did peverin seem strange that day or pretty normal did it seem like perhaps he was afflicted at the time 
Well, he was shook. There's no doubt about that. He was very shook from it. Could tell he was... It's disturbing, ain't it? Seeing someone dead like that. Does he play there often? No. No, I've told him stay away from the place. Did he ever mention what he was doing there? All he told me is he was looking for a lost animal. Seems to be a lot more of those these days. He did tell us that he's been helping find a lot of those. He's a good boy. Hmm. We've seen nothing different, that's for sure. Well, unless there's something else I can help. If this is happening to him now, I should really be going. At least be helping him and watching him, keeping an eye. Not that I don't believe that you couldn't help more, but... Well, I was shown how with my wife. It's Would not... You... Go ahead. Oh, go... no, you go ahead. Would you be willing to uh, accept an escort back? Perhaps I can take a look at your wife's things. I'd have to dig them out, but if you wanted to take a look at the room, you could see. I, uh, Rice stands up at this and nods. And just kind of, you know, starts kind of getting ready to walk them back. Just give me a moment outside or come by whenever you want. It's not like we're going to get rid of it. We're not going to leave town. Everything we know is here. Yeah, I nod. You know, whatever it's got to do. Okay. I'll be by. Okay, then if you say that you'll be by, um, he'll head out. Uh, you don't hear him kind of step off the steps. Uh, if you're listening intently or closely, you'll hear a, another like long, drawn-out, exasperated sigh before you hear the, the portly man move down the steps. The steps creak, and you hear the first like splurge of the mud, and then he steps on home, leaving the five players in Kendra. Well... That wasn't quite how I thought it was going to go, but, well, at least he, he took that better than I thought he would. All right, that's good. I mean, he did say honesty, but to be honest, on my part. Well, you weren't what? completely honest with him. You didn't tell him that there was a murderer inside of him. Well, I mean, to be honest, that it was a nuanced, he had a lot of information, that trip guy. So, I mean... I didn't mention that he was a Harrowstone prisoner either. We, I didn't want to give him a full download. He seemed a little snowed. Uh, but the good information here is that since his father knows, if we do go into Harrowstone, we know where we can find him and we know this won't be a shock if we need him. Perhaps. I feel like there's things he's not telling us. Oh, right. there's absolutely things he's not telling us. In fact, if I were you and you really do want to go take a look at his wife's things, I would make your visit sooner rather than later. I know he's going to stand up uh, at this point after listening to everything. And uh, he's going to, you know, he's trying to get everybody's attention. And um, he... Uh, yeah, there, there's there's definitely some things going on here. Um, he's gonna say that uh, well, clearly that there there could be some connection here with the boy and the events going on. There's too much uh, coincidence for it not to be. He said that his mother's from Nadal, and we we know that people are here searching for something or someone and he could very well be that. He also said that it, 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 Pevern was not his natural born son and that he doesn't know who the father is, but from what I could gather, Pevern could, he could have been some sort of immaculate conception uh, and that seems something so unique that it could be, I mean, you've all seen 
how those things are drawn to him. He, he he could be what they're looking for, and if they can't get inside of him in that room, maybe that is the best, safest place for him. Um, until we've are able to go and see for ourselves what's in waiting for us in, in Harrison. Well, time will tell. I'm gonna get some shut eye, and <clears throat> tomorrow morning I'll go check on Jermenda and see what what those potions were like. If anything's useful for us before we All head right. on in. I uh, yeah, think it's time we did some hunting. Okay. That leaves Temerity and Rye. Sleep or other? Uh, other for Rye. I'm gonna okay. I'm actually gonna go ahead and jog over to uh uh Oh my gosh, not God. Zokar. 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 Zokar, gosh. I'm just gonna write it down somewhere. Fuck. Hey. Under the NPC <clears throat> list of names on the roll twenty uh, page. I, I okay. I, yeah, you're right. Is, I does that try does to that, rely on? Is, Troy, he, he's going to write it down in his uh, notes. I have notes. I do have notes. <laughs> There's several here. We listen. I'm the guy. I'm like growing up in high school. That like who wants to be in my group? All right, you get the notebook. You get to do all the documenting. I am not organized or smart, so you just take all that. So you're the person I didn't want in my group. <clears throat> yeah, but you're I'm the person you got assigned with. So this is <laughs> what it is. So every college group assignment was in yeah. preparation for this moment. Got it. Yes. <laughs> this is why they did that specifically for me. Um yeah, I'm just gonna I have a lot on my mind right now. Uh I'm gonna a jog will do me well, any excuse, honestly. So I might as well get to work and do a little investigating and run over to uh, Zokar's uh, once everything sort of settles down here. Okay. Um, after things begin to settle, you you wanted to move in the uh, in the destination there enough of, of Zokar. So you're moving to the Laughing Demon then, since you know that that's where they're staying. Yes. Okay. Interesting title for a tavern. Well, I mean, with a wife that was <laughs> possessing it is, uh, anyways. I don't know. Just interesting name. The the possessed son tavern. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the laughing demon. Yep. So uh, the door is is unlocked. Uh, small town, right? Small town. What um, time is this about? Like. Man, you're looking at like probably 1.30 in the morning, if 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 that's about. It's definitely it's after midnight. Day. It's a long day. Oh, really? Okay, I didn't know it was that late. We've oh, only fine. been there for like two or three days. So that's fine. Two nights. <laughs> I think the statue thing was technically just the same day. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So you make it over to the Laughing Demon. The door is unlocked. Um, you hear movement in the rear side of, of the building. Um, it's not being super quiet. He's not like yelling, but... There is some movement uh, that you can hear. It sounds like maybe furniture is being shifted. You're not entirely sure. Um, I walk in and, you know, uh, announce myself, but not like, you know, so loudly just to try to get the attention. Okay. All right. So do you just say, hey, I'm here? Or are you calling out to like say, hey, where are you at? What, is this, what does this look like? I walk in and I just, uh, you know, kind of kind of say in a louder voice, but not like yelling or anything. I just go. Zokar. Uh, okay. Are you here? Sure. Um, after probably two or three seconds, there's a, a pause, like a, a brief uh, brief pause before you hear, Yo, we're in the back. Come on. Pass the counter. All right. I go back. Three or four steps uh, ascend up before there's like another small hallway that turns to the right. And it before seems. I do that, can I roll perception? Sure. To see if anything seems odd or different maybe i sense something a little different now let's see what you got i've never seen this bar in the early mornings okay sure right um 
it's late. Um, there's there's not even really much in the way of a, a sconce that seems to nestle a torch. Um, lanterns are, are turned down at this point. You're getting moonlight through the windows. Um, not really anything seems out of place. It's, it's a vacant bar. Uh, you can see some firelight back. It seems to be emitting a glow on the rear wall before it turns to, to a room. That's where you hear most of the movement. Okay, I walk back. Sure. You move to the to the rear part of this this building, and you can see that it actually turns from a bar into a house. It's it's or at least it feels like a house. It's a home. Cuts from an open establishment into a bedroom. There's not even a door there. It's just an arch. I knock on the arch. Just kind of. You see that um, Zokar is is kind of like. He's, he's at his knees, like, under the bed, trying to pull some things out. Uh, there are a few crates that he seems to be removing from under the bed. Hey, come here, come here help me move this. It's a bit heavy. Yeah, I help him. Sure. Um, you kind of pull the bed to the side and, and pull this out. It was very, very tightly wedged under there. Um, and you can see the surface of it is is pretty covered in dust. It's It's been a long while since it's been messed with. Uh, he <sighs> blows this dust away and kind of <coughs> coughs. Uh, before pushing it aside and then pulling another box out. And he managed to pull out like three or four of these boxes that contain things. Uh, one of which looks primarily of clothes. Uh, another seems to be some personal effects. Um, one of it seems to just contain what looks like a backpack. Um, but short of that, it's just some knickknacks and things that, that, that they had had together. Do you mind if I take a look? Well, I, I suppose I don't mind. Um, I give him a nod, you know, kind of make eye contact with him. You know, just let him know I'm going to be sensitive, you know. I'm not just going to come you. tearing through. Uh, but I do start to investigate, start looking through the things there. He, He's he's watching, right? He's he's, he's kind of intent on watching to make sure that, you're, you know, you're holding up to your end. Um, and as you're, you're kind of like rifling through the things, you find what looks to be um, a small, like very small leather bound journal. Uh, I goes, oh, that, that's it. That's where I wrote the things in. Um, those are my own personal bits that I, I took. Um, there are some personal things. If you want me to find those names, I, I can take a look. But if you, she had her some of her own, she had her own book if you wanted to. Anything that uh, you're willing to share might help us understand what's going on with Pevrin. Sure. So. Uh, he he moves over and he, he pops a squad next to you. Uh, he kind of drops down to like sitting on one leg with the other leg up. And I mean, it's like it's it's like um, school chums, right? Like he sits down next to you and his like his arms bumping into your side. And this is probably as much human interaction as he's had in relations to his his wife in a long time. So he's he's reading this and you can tell he's finding it difficult. Like he's very strongly flipping through the pages and then he starts to slow down, and he's reading some things. <sighs> Flips another page. And then he sees you kind of like looking, and he <clears throat> continues flipping through those pages again. Before he gets down to um, the page of these names. So, chat. This is where it comes to you guys here. I need the names of two individuals. These are smugglers in the city of Nadal. Well done, Bill Gates. That's definitely not it. Obviously. Yep. So hit me with names for smugglers out of Nadal. <laughs> Bill hates. <laughs> it's very different. Okay. All right. All right. There we go. I've got some names here. It looks like we have an Ephraim Felton and a Deneen Skellix. We're going to go with Ephraim Felton and Deneen Skellix. You're going to want to write those down. Yeah. Let me. Uh... Yeah. Because by the time this comes back, I don't know what I'll say. There was a. There was a. A, a Timothy. Belmont <laughs> and a, De a Dante from Devils May Cry. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Felton. Ephraim Felton and Deneen Skellix. 
Now, okay, so do these names mean anything to me? I mean, I know my, I, I mean, I obviously know my backstory, but I sure. don't know. Uh, um, give me, give me a not like knowledge local. Uh, I'll give you a, a circumstantial bonus because you're from the area and you deal with these kind of figures. So whatever your knowledge local is, let's go ahead and add four to it. Okay. That's not great. No, it's not. That is, oh, wait, I don't if, have a reroll, do if I? If only he no. had rerolls. If, oh, no, he does not mm. have any rerolls. Not any rerolls. You re do have hit points. You do, <laughs> you you do, do have, have hit points. points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I, okay, so I don't recognize these names at all then. Uh -uh. Man, no. that's that. So <clears throat> I don't you know, know what that means to ride just yet, but like uh, that that's surprising because um, I look to, to Zokar and I ask him, uh, how old was your wife when you met her? And um, how old would she be today? Well, I, if you're not going to be honest, I, I don't know. Hmm. There were some things about her that, well, it, sometimes I didn't know if I was looking at me to you. Hold on. Sorry. My, my headset just. That's a mood. Sorry, I, I didn't hear any of that because my headset died. Uh, you go ahead and say that again, please. No, I don't know. Um, sometimes, if it was like to me to you, it was like I was looking to her as if it were me to the woman in, in your group. She had some things about her that was different. Hmm. How long were you with her? Oh, well, for, I, I would say about five years. Five good years. Hmm. Oh, man. But um, I, she was sick at the end, and I knew she was sick, but I didn't know what with, and neither did, neither did Jaminda. It could have been a number of things. Nadal is not a forgiving place. I, uh, it, he still ha does, do I have the book now in my hand? No, it's, it's, uh, he, he's still kind of going through it, living through it, but, um. Did you say there were two books? You said that yeah, there was one yeah. in there and then. Um, as you're kind of pushing through, you, you discover another leather bound journal. This one is, um, this one strikes a chord with you. It's pitch black leather and it has silver, uh, almost like silver stitching. Um, this is a very, very high quality make. This would be something that would, that would not be sold at a stall. Does it look uh, uh, noble? Does it look like maybe a religious text? No, this looks akin to to a private journal. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna kind of like when I when I'm rifling through, I'm gonna pick it up and kind of like show him, and just kind of point like. Yeah, that, that was hers. It was. Do you mind if I take a look? Um, I I mean I don't mind just. If he would leave it, that would, that would be ideal. I nod and, uh, I, uh, open up the book. Now you, you have to remember, right? Um, from looking at what it is that Zokar has done compared to the text inside of this book, Zokar has very clearly said that he cannot read or write. So what he's showing you in this book it looks like you're talking like kindergartner level text in his book, but the one in yours, very, very different. The penmanship is astounding. It is something that you would, you would have to pay someone for someone of very high skill and talent. More than that. Um, it is not traditionally of a font that you would see of the region. Uh, is it Verician by any chance? Let's see. Which is a specific language, I think, pretty much to Nadal. It is. 
It is. Oh, I speak that. That works out. All right. Uh, Good, because probably the rest of us do not. <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty specific uh, language to take. I didn't think it, w- it would even pop up, maybe, but I'm glad it did. Uh, well, I'm just going to look for some kind of glossary or, you know, some, something to let me know what this is all about. You know, is there any kind of intro or so, intri- yeah. like an entry uh, uh, journal, like a journal entry, like a first entry or something? So when you're glancing over it, you notice that Zokar is is watching and he struggles to sort of read what you're what you're going through. Um, he just kind of points. He's like, I, I never understood what that is. And he points at a symbol. Um, but there is nothing there for you. I don't know what it means. Is that, what is there something from where you're from where the leaves did it? Did I mean anything? Wait, so you're saying that he's seeing something that I'm not seeing? Uh, yes, he's seeing what he says is leaves. And I don't see that anywhere on the page. You don't see leaves. You see text. I give him a, a strange look. And um, I just say, uh, what? I don't see any symbols here. He kind of points and he traces oh, right there. There's leaves that go up into... Uh, to the face of of the woman right there, it sort of looks like, well, my wife. But I, it's not at the same time. And there's there's no face there. It's it's text. Hmm. Interesting. Um. I. I. Oh man, that's so weird. Uh. Man, do I do I shoot straight with this guy at this point or not? Um, I show him another page, and I ask him what he sees. I don't see nothing. Is there anything there? There is. Okay, writing. There is. Yes. Um, perhaps uh, it's just a book of pictures. Um. Maybe give, there's something magical about it. Give me Perhaps a bluff. Perhaps I'll have Temerity look at it. Yeah, give me a bluff. Uh, yeah. It's Fair. not gonna be. It's not gonna be super hard. But it's not gonna be easy. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Why do I constantly? Whoa, <laughs> dude! Ones. Two ones back to back, dog. That's not oh great. My God, Damn, dude. man. He Christ. sees the darkest timeline after all. I mean, how is it gonna know I'm lying? You said you were from the doll, too, so I don't know. I beat you with a four. Yeah, thanks. Great. <laughs> I guess I'm like, being like super well, scared. I'm not lying. This here is just a picture book. You know, like, I'm <laughs> super obvious. Like, God, I'm so dumb. He, 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 uh, he goes, uh huh. Sure. Yeah, I bet. It doesn't matter. Because I can't read anyway, so you don't have to be a jerk about it. it kind of turns from to the side. How would he even know about reading? He just sees pictures. The old because <laughs> you're like, he's like, what? What's there? And you're like, nothing. Maybe it's pictures. <laughs> Maybe it's pictures. <laughs> I just turn like suddenly like Danish and Nor- from Norway, Scandinavian. <laughs> um, I'm just like clearly lying because yeah. I just turn into a Danish person. Um, okay. Um, I kind of shrug my shoulders and I just keep looking through it. What What is the first entry read? I, I'm going to start reading it. It's on the cover. the The cover is probably the most uh, the most informing. Okay. Um, yeah. What's the cover say? The cover is an introduction. It's a gift uh, to this person. Uh, it's. Hold on, sorry. You're fine. Hey, babe. Hey, sweetie. Hold, hold on, but you go ahead. Oh, go ahead, buddy. Sorry, sorry. Adult, uh, parent time. One sec. <laughs> That's fine. So, what do you guys think that this says? No, but I. Don't I... Know. 
my the level the second level one spell I took was comprehend languages. So I'm like, why are you never with him? <laughs> True. Why don't we always send someone with him? Oh, that's a fair point. Yeah, <laughs> he's. Hey, I thought about going with him, but I'm also for like, I'll need some sleep. <laughs> I uh, the, now the more the more we keep finding out, the more I'm thinking Peverin's like a real. They're probably after. She Peverin. says. She said. So, one person said hi. <laughs> looking at Wild. Oh, <laughs> I wait. Yeah, she she tends to focus on one thing. <laughs> Um, okay, sorry, sorry. She was going to sleep. So, um, what was the last? Thing? Oh, the tie, the cover. Yeah, it uh, it says in uh, Verisian, um, to my daughter, Karina, Ooh. Karina Zoll, Z H O L. Uh, spell that again one more time. Karina, C A R I N A. Zol, Z H O L. Z H O L? Yes, Z H O L. To my daughter. Um, that last Karina name, Zoll. is that nobility or any sort of uh, faction I would know? I mean, is that a. Potentially. Well known? You can roll for it. Okay. I, I mean, I'll, I'll roll, roll Out of one. I know who it is. I know the family line that is. Uh, so just wisdom to remember? Um, one of us roll for you. Give me a um, give me an ability. I will give you a plus two for the area and a plus two for. Man, y'all, he needs <laughs> chat. He needs some. This man's needs some love on. Listen, I am really like ass tonight. God <laughs> it's pretty damn. bad. Damn. It's pretty bad. For the low low <sighs> cost of ten gift subs, you can help this. <laughs> I don't even think that'll sure. help. Like, I honestly don't even think re-rolls at this okay, point. That's very fair. I need, like, your energy, like a spirit bomb, like DBZ. Give oh, you know what? Go. Here we go. Yeah. We'll blow on your dice. I'll give you one of my luck re-rolls. Oh, my gosh. Ooh. This is this is lore. This is this, this is, is so... I'm rolling so bad, the DM's like, this is let like me help you. Out of character, <laughs> Umbral Court lore. Like, pretty pretty big shit. Yeah, and this is why I'm pretty sure that I would, I mean, well, I mean, I wasn't really, like, hooked in, but I feel like I might have heard one of these names. Go ahead. Oh, am I re-rolling this? Yeah, okay. I'm giving you one of my luck re-rolls. That's right. Okay, sorry. Oh, my God. With with the, the, the two plus twos, I put you at 20. I said the DC at 18, so you're you're lucky here. This is difficult, but lucky it's... Here. Lucky you gave me luck. It's, it's not so, so hard. Um... You don't really know Karina, but you know Zal. Zal is important because Zal was the most prolific high priestess of Zan Kuthan at the Temple of Shadow Square in Kentargo. Mm, yeah, this... the kid, the kid, they're after the kid for sure. Because <laughs> it's like a freaking. Like oh my god, god yeah! He's like he's... a godchild. Well, not no, he's not. He, I mean, but uh, he said that that his wife got possessed and then had a baby, and he didn't have any penetration. So. Oh my gosh, man. Uh, uh, that's fucked. Oh man, Peverin. You are, you are like uh. Like what is uh you're like a little hidden away little prince, like a little noble prince hidden away here. He's uh he's like the Baratheon. You know he's the kind of uh, like the Baratheon, yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Okay, uh Damn. Um I look over at uh uh Yeah, it, it gets Zokar. more crazy than that. So. Yeah, oh yeah. I've done I've done a little <laughs> I've done a little research in an doll. I just don't know the names yet. I know how things work pretty much but um i look at uh zokar and i just i tell him i believe you by the way um about about what that she was special people oh. don't typically leave nadal and those that do went to great lengths and usually at great expense 
If somebody left Nadal, they had to have some kind of means. So I believe you. I believe that she was special. Did you I just kind of look at him almost lo- like almost longingly, like uh, maybe we have a shared pain. Did you? I think you're saying things there that I cannot. And if that's the case, then you can probably read it too. Can. Was she a good person in there? Does it say anything about that? When, about what? When, when she was younger, did she do bad things? I look at him and I nod and I say, you're right. I can read some things here on the page. I was trying to decide if you truly wanted to know. I'm just starting to get into it myself, but I will tell you, uh, I'm going to respect your request not to mention her name. Um, and I'm just going to eye him. He's, when you say that, his eyes, like, kind of, they're no longer kind of wandering and listening, that he just, he turns to you. What's it say? He's, you can see he's kind of testing you. Um... Uh, some names I myself would rather not say out loud, but I, I, um, I mean, I can't even write it down for him. The the, illiterate fuck. Uh, um, (laughs) do you truly want me to say the name? And I just look at a dead stare. She only ever told me her first name. I didn't know her, her sir, her family name. <sighs> oh my God. Why not? Yes. Oh my God. Why not? I give him a look and it's a very sad look. All right. It's a regrettable look. Um, But I say it, man. The... I don't know if this is your wife, but if this belonged to her, it is uh, inscripted in a very specific language to Nadal, and it is addressed to their daughter. And the name on here is Karina Zol. I, yeah, she. told me that her name was Karina have you heard of her last name no no I assume if it was important she would have told me is there anything else that she left behind she didn't have much when when we, we found each other where did you find her again on the road was traveling. It was before I was a cook. I what did work- she look like? Was she traveling with other people? Was no. she in a crowd? Was she alone? She was alone. Had a cowl drawn up real tight. Could only see <sighs> her nose and, and her lips. Did she ever tell you if she was scared of anything or anyone specific? No. She was a brave woman. <clears throat> Else if she... If she if she weren't sick, she'd fight the gods themselves. She popped me one or two times in the face when I got a little lippy. Left me with a bloody nose, she did. I, uh, I'm kind of looking at this book and at the other book. Um, I look over at, at uh, Zokar and I just say, I understand these are precious to you but would you mind if would you mind if maybe I took them with me to read and research I'm sorry if I wasn't honest with you at the beginning this is potentially some 
very serious, very serious findings, and I didn't want to upset you. He closes his book. Well, there's not much you can get from this. I don't mind if you take this one, but I would like that one to stay here. I suppose you're more than welcome to come back and read after dark, after business closed. I give him, I give him a look, and uh, I can understand that. And I'll do that if that's what you want. I However, would, it would mean a lot to me. I'll be honest with you, uh, Mr. Rye. I, if you wanted the book, you could take the book. It's not like I could fight you. I don't want to take it from you. Seems like you've had your fair share. Um, he Rye smiles. is a soft spot for people who, uh, who you know, have dealt with people or know people from the dolls. So he's maybe a little more sympathetic uh, to to Zokar. Um. Is there anything else in the box besides these two journals? Um, there is. There is. And it's something that you have seen before. It's okay. something that you've seen before. It is. Um, are you familiar with what a diadem is? No. So a diadem is like a headpiece. Um, they wear it more or less across the across their, just above their brow. Oh, yeah, 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 like yeah. I, fi I, I find those in Diablo 2 all the time. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. It's, it's like that. <laughs> um, but this seems to... Uh, this is prominent because these are only given to the priestesses of the Umbral Disc. And they what sticks out to you most is that the um the priestesses, at least the priestesses in training, they wear these diadems that cover their eyes, and they run gold leak chain down their arms um, that runs to a like what looks like a, a silver spindle, and at the end of it is a crystal that stays like deathly still and even though their eyes are closed because i mean because they're covered right they they're guided by these crystals you have seen these in the streets whenever there is there is any kind of uh, procession or event they are guided by these these crystals so that sticks out to you specifically um and seeing this entire like diadem piece that kind of covers the eyes that you know that she was a a priestess uh someone of note to uh, to the Shadow Spire in Kentargo. Oh my God, man! That's this is like I don't know if Chad understands like the seriousness of these reveals right now, um, <laughs> and like, I mean, God, I'm so glad that like I'm not in Rise position because this is a lot to take in and try to decide <laughs> what the fuck to do. Um, because Rai at this point has pretty much survived that like, Peverin is probably some sort of like. Nadal noble no nobility of some kind and if that's got connection then if anyone were to find out that would be very 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 bad um probably i mean depending on the context of her leaving but i don't think it'd be good um i look at zokar and i just kind of pick up the uh did you call it a, a, a duridi Dur diatom diatom okay yeah. i'm gonna try to remember that um, that's it's just it's just a headpiece. It's just a headpiece. Head I just point at it and circle. I kind of just in, in, inquire. You know, I just I just pick it up and look at it, and point at it, like confused. I don't know. She said it was from her family, and I didn't think much of it. She didn't like wearing it, and she never wore it in front of me. I'm gonna inspect it. Is there anything I can learn, like any inscription or anything like that? On give it? me a perception. Sure. Uh. Sorry, team. I'm trying to be sensitive to your role playing as well. Sure. You um, there is a small inscription that uh, it looks as if it is a um, again it's it's gifted, uh, and there are inscriptions inside that look like it's some sort of uh, mundane runes, as far as you can tell. Some of it's been wore away, uh, but it does say uh, "Daughter Zal Fifteenth. Fifteenth. Yes, Daughter Zal the Fifteenth. Okay, and I'm assuming that's a date. Could be a date. Could be, um, could be like a, a lineage thing, sort of like junior, senior, that sort of thing. Like Frank Harrison the fourth. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so Karina Zoll the fifteenth makes sense. Um, do you mind if? Uh, well, first of all, 
I grab it and I'm looking at it and I kind of show him where I see the inscription. Seems it was given to her. He looks at it. I'm sorry, I, I still can't read that. It says uh, her name and it says the 15th. Did she ever speak of any? I mean, she's got sisters or brothers. Yeah, okay, at that, right, kind of, okay. How many brothers and sisters did she say she had? I don't know. We we didn't talk about her past very much. She said it was a bit of a sore spot. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Um, I look at Zokar, and, I mean, I look at him, I look at him hard, all right? <laughs> I give him a hard man <laughs> look, and I tell him, you you might want to keep a very close eye on Peverin. I uh, I mean I, I I I do. I do. Has anyone ever has anyone ever come asking about Peverin at any time? Hmm. He pauses again. Mm. No, I think I think you're the first. Did anyone in town maybe give him special attention or uh any anything like that? What do you mean when you say special attention? Like if someone mean, favored him? Is there does it does you know I'll just say it like right. Did anybody mentor him or take a liking to him or uh, request to oh. spend time with him or well, teach him anything? There weren't much. Now, he stays pretty busy, but he did spend two summers working with Mr. Gorovan. And that is the... He's the teacher at, at the... He's the teacher at the Unfurling Scroll. What was his name again? Gorovan. He's a nicer older man. Uh, his name is uh, Alendru. Alendru Gorovan. And he took a special liking to your son or just in a normal teacher-student capacity? I don't know. I never went to school. Wouldn't say I, I knew much about it. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. I. I wish I was a bit more of help to you. I'm, I'm not what you might say is a, a well-learned man. But. I, uh, at this, I put my hand on his back. In a nice way. I go, I attempt to. He doesn't mind. He'll, like, he'll, he'll let you do that. All right. And I look at him and, and I tell him, you've been a lot of help. I'm hoping we can help your son. I know you've been through a lot. I and I'm not the smartest uh I'm not the sharpest uh, sword in the sheath either. Well I think it's if anyone can help you, it's probably Mr. Gorovan over at the Unfurling Scroll. He's He's the opposite of me, he's a bit more well read. I uh, I look at him and I nod and and I probably will do that. Thank you. I take my hand off his shoulder. Uh, he um and I, he yep stops you for a moment. Can you can you read can you read to me what it says in the last of her book? She wrote in it well for forever and just days before before she took ill. That's when she stopped and I want to know what it says. I'd be happy to read it to you. And uh, I'll just prop open the book, and I'd be willing to spend some time reading to Zokar this evening if he doesn't mind me just chilling out and reading to him for a little bit. Sure. It's um, it's a pretty simple account, um, and a lot of the other pages are very, very wordy by nature, uh, but this is not. Um, and she starts by saying that 
this is her last, uh, her last recording, that her life is going in a different direction and her light is fading. That one day, this might help another person, but clearly will not help her husband. And she takes this time uh, to note, my life was in a very dark place under the disc. But when I escaped, I thought that I might have found my way. And I wandered for a while before finally meeting that simple man. I was always afraid that I would be taken or that I would be brought back to the spire. But that simple man, he took me away from that. And then there's like a small, like a small, like little addendum, the small, like um, in parentheses. Um, it doesn't hurt that he had a good smile and he said I had a nice arse. <laughs> Uh, does that get a reaction out of Zokar at all? If you read that to him, um, I am. I'm reading all of it to him. Uh, he he uh he does. He smiles quite large. It's large, like toothy grin, and he like he looks and he's like, and she did. Quite nice. It's a fucked up place, but there are some lookers in the doll, <laughs> and I give him a smile. <sighs> um, I uh I close the book. And I kind of get up like I'm about to leave. Um, I ask him if I can take the head, the headpiece with me, the head wear. Like, do you mind if I show this to a couple of the uh, my my? And I kind of stumble on the word because I don't know if they're friends or companions or mercenary. You know, uh, some of my associates. Give me a diplomacy. Sure. I hate being nice. <laughs> my my intimidation doesn't help me too much here. I'll give you an even or an odd in your favor. Uh, what's chat say? First person to throw out even or odd, that's what we'll go with. And we wait. All right, odd. Odd it is. Chat, you're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll, 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 for the favor of the story, I'll give you my last, I'll, my last roll. Oh, oh my gosh, man! I feel like you've taken so much pity on me and my shitty rolls in the last like couple sessions. Man, for, I'm okay with for what it's worth, like sometimes R and Jesus just does not want you to succeed. He hates me. So mm. even or odd in your favor, or she? Uh, I'm gonna go with odd still. I'm gonna keep up with. I'm gonna believe. Oh, yeah, of course came in handy. Wow, my wow, my ones are coming in, coming in hot now. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. Um, he he's a little resistant to the idea at first, but he finally says, "Um, all right. Since since you read it to me, and you read the page, I nod at him." And uh, I try to put it, you know, the headpiece on my, you know, stow it away somewhere. So sure. it's not so obvious I'm walking around it. Um, but I also tell him, uh, you need to be very careful with the contents of that box. Um, and I uh, point at the uh, silver laced book that he's not letting me take. And I tell him, I point at it and I say, especially this one. If this got into the wrong hands, it might be very bad for you or your son. You might want to consider. He's already like covering it up, right? He's like, he's putting clothes back on top of it, relitting the box, and he's trying to lift up the bed and he's kicking it under the bed. He's like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't exist. <laughs> um, I look at him and I say, you know, one thing I used to do in the doll is uh, I would bury things just a thought and um with that i uh i mean uh he's not gonna let me take that fucking book i i take the journal okay the other one okay and i take the uh headpiece and um, there isn't anything else of note there just some clothes 
Are these like traditional garbs, like these clothes? Do they look like ceremonial or do they look, they look like, like They mostly rags? look like, like robes. Uh, it looks like just regular robes as far as you can tell. The only thing that would of, be of note um, is the diatom and uh, the, the, the personal effects journal. Okay, okay, I'm gonna grab those and uh, I am gonna tell them that I would like to come back. Excuse me. I would like to come back and um, read the, the Silver Lace book again very soon um i believe that there might be more answers in that book sure so then i need you to do me a favor and i would like for you to uh if you could give me give me some events uh write it down for me give me some events that you might want to discover about if they're in the book i'll let you know if it's there um because she was very methodical about what she recorded, even more so than than Petros in his own journal. Um, so, um, if there are details there that you wanted to find, I could I could let you know, and we can come up with that. Okay. Uh, for now, though, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Sure. And see if I can think of anything, and uh, I feel like I'm capitalizing all the time here. So let's disengage. Okay. If you're good. I'm good, and I'll just head back, and uh, I'll check on. Uh, uh, Pevram before I go, if that's okay, just kind of sure. You peek into a in. to a room that sort of looks like it is a um, the uh, the storage under under like a, a, a stairwell. Uh, the room is probably no more than like a four four wide by like by three deep, and it goes up about five or so feet. Um, before it, there's like uh, other banisters and things that are built above it, uh, load bearing beams, uh, and it's got a door that's opened but from what you can see inside it is not a pretty sight um it's that the wood is not like rotted or anything of that nature but there are many runes that you might be familiar with from nadal these are runes that you are familiar with from the studies of zankuthan wait so this looks like a room from nadal it looks like it is runic ledger that has been scrivened in blood on the walls. Okay. Uh, all right. Are there any owls or invitations to Hogwarts? No, around? no, sir. Okay. Not all not right. in this tale, not this time. It seems like a Harry Potter situation. Throw them under the, the stairs. Um. Okay, yeah, that's fucking crazy. Uh, what are they in, the, in there in blood? Like, are they on like the the door frame or inside? Like, it's it's floor, ceiling, walls, door. It's the whole shebang. It's all looks like just very in depth um, runic magic. I'm gonna walk back down the hall to Zokar and just kind of be like, "Hey, I was on my way out and I thought I'd check on Pevrin. His room is." interesting oh that's not his room that's that was the room that his mother made for when she lamp lit and the people came to her has pever ever used that room no but i think he's probably gonna become fairly familiar with it if it stays anyway like it was with his mother Oh my God, Z Zokar, are you fucking for real right now? You got bloody runes in a fucking. You oh my God, is this, is this sure Elo this? saying this? This is me. This is me. Just okay. I'm not. I'm not. No, this is me. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I don't. If I don't I have my Batman voice, but this guy. Yeah. This guy. Oh we my God. We've asked him multiple times, and he's like, "Well, oh, nothing. Nothing weird here. We're fine." Well, um, if he if he brought it up, everybody have a room with blood in the walls. Think think about it, like right. Your your late wife tells you to never say her name to anyone. She gets possessed by the undead, and she has a room that she can go hide in, where the possessed or where the undead can't get to her. Who the hell is he gonna tell about that? <laughs> hey Frank, you you won't believe this. The late pastor possessed me wife again. Like that that's that's not gonna be like church talk. That's three times this week. Yeah, well, I mean, right. we do have like bloody statues and shit, and people. Oh, this is this is um, very very old. Like this is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can tell, yeah, like yeah. it's it's so dark. It almost looks like it's it was like 
used in text, right? But you know, Viserion, when they would do the runic magic, there is power in blood. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, in like a Game of Thrones sense, too. Uh, I just like kind of like just kind of follow up like mm, how how long is how long has that been there well i suppose after after the first time she was visited she made it yeah she made it then so i would have to say just before pevrin's birth probably 11 years ago that time Wait, I thought they were only together for five years, you said. No. No? No. He said 11 to 12. Yeah, 11 to 12. She came into his life about 12 years ago. Okay. Sorry, maybe I misheard that. Um, do you happen to know what or whose blood she used? Oh, I. it wasn't who. It was a, it was a what? I bought a goat. We served it here. I just... She use the blood. You're a complicated man, Zokar. <clears throat> That's literally a word that no one's ever used for me. Mm. I don't think they know you well enough. And with that, I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I uh, give him a nod, and I tell him I'm I'm heading home, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna head back, okay. and I'm gonna jog on the way back. What time is it by now? How long did all that take? You probably spent uh, reasonably about half an hour to 40 minutes with Zokar. I, I don't want to say like a full hour, but by the time you arrive back, everyone will likely have nestled in and started going to sleep, at least as well as a haunted house can allow you to go to sleep. Yeah, right? Um, God damn, that's so much, that's so much shit that I have to think about now. Oh. Um... Uh, okay, I so is the you. house like quiet? Is everybody just... You guys tell me. Is the house quiet? Yeah. Eli, Oz, Torben, and Temerity? You guys going through like Oz nightly is, rituals? Oz is definitely going to bed. He's probably doing his nightly ritual, if not already have done it. I don't I don't know how long. It's An hour or so, 45 minutes an hour. Yeah, yeah. probably is it, sleeping. Is it face mask night or not? <laughs> definitely face mask night. <laughs> I'm not really staying awake until he's back. Okay. No. Is is there still like ethereal mist and a ghost in my bedroom? Nope. It's since okay. been cleared out. I'm gonna go to sleep um, in whatever bed I was in the night before, regardless of if that's where Peverin is or not, because I don't really care. Okay. <laughs> doesn't doesn't like freak me out. Or anything. Sure. Eli is probably napping his uh, his night away. Fully dressed in his armor still. <laughs> okay, so before um, I go to bed, I'm gonna I'm not gonna pry as I open, but I'm definitely gonna give it like a look. And then go back to bed. Like Okay. Um I wanna see if it's there is I'm some anything. You can tell. Give me a heal check actually. Let's see what you get with a heal. Okay. You can tell that there's some irritation to his eye, um, but it doesn't. Most of the damage to his eyes, as far as you can tell, is from the burning, from the actual burning in, in the runes. There, the skin is is um, it's 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 pink, and it, there's like some char marks on the flesh. It's raised very very tightly around. It looks irritated, um, Bl blistered. Yeah, like my finger from cooking a steak the other night. You um. He really needs to see someone about this. Obviously, someone like um, an apothecary, um, uh, maybe a medicine man, something that that can assist. Hell, even even a, a part of the uh, the church, a clergy, right? They could they could assist with this. Um, but so far, fine, it'll heal. Lucky for him, um, you guys are planning a trip to the church. I'm not going to the church. On the way back, I I uh, Rai's gonna look for some like aloe can i like survival and see if i can find some you can try you can try this is gonna be very difficult yeah th there's not much around right it's pretty desolate or whatever um i'm gonna try though sure give it a whirl a see if i can find something took the words out of my mouth maggie you find peaches lots of peaches all there's right a lot of peaches um 
All right, never mind then. I'm gonna come in. It, it, Torvin, are you just? Are you? You said you're gonna be up. Are you just gonna be like by the fire, join a smoke or something? What do I see when I come in? Mostly. Okay. Um, I also want to actually take a look at the eye because, like, I'm the person that has healing skill. Um, so that probably is wise. Okay. okay. Um, when I come in, I do want to sit, like, seeing everybody else kind of gone and just you there and i just kind of want to sit next to you like not even make eye contact but just sit down next to you and i'm just gonna say i think uh i think we got some big issues here and i'm just gonna stare into the fire i is there more issues or just the fighting what we've seen i look over at him now and uh i think uh this might have just got a little more complicated <laughs> I, well, that's what we need. Yeah. Um, and I I give Torvin a rundown of what happened there. Not like a super specific, but I'm not leaving anything out. I'm, I'm letting him know the, and that uh, I also share with him the connections that Rye has already made in his head that uh, Pevrin may have some connections let's to... let's save that for the next morning we're, we we should take a brief break like a, oh, okay. a, a two yeah, or three minute fine. break um i need water i also need to to bio real fast mm -hmm. and when we come back we can actually have that discussion and then do our our small like separations so people can start figuring some things out get some more details okay sound good yep excellent Okay, well guys, we'll be right back in just a minute. Uh, go to your bio, get something to drink, and we'll see you in just a second. Okay? Okay. All right guys, we are back from our break and we will continue from henceforth. So, we left with you uh, explaining some things to Torvin. <clears throat> was there anything that you wanted specifically to to tell to him, or do you just want to you want to kind of sum things up briefly? Do you want to wait until the morning to kind of give everybody like spill the beans in the morning? What are you What are you thinking? No, I want to share. Uh, I want to share some time with with Torvin. I uh, I from the beginning have have seen his merit, though I don't know that much about him. Um, so I did want. I do. I think Rai, I mean, trusts him as much as Rai can trust anyone. Sure. He seemed pretty much on the up and up. He seems pretty wise. The things he said so far have made a lot of sense to Rai. So he wants to sit down. And I, I mean, we already said that, uh, you know, things might be deeper than, you know, we thought. And uh, I, yeah, I'll just RP that conversation if it's cool. Go for it. I had a conversation with Zokar. I his well, he was telling the truth. His wife is for sure from Nadal. In the belongings that he showed me of his uh former wife, <clears throat> there were uh personal items that were pretty interesting one of which was a journal um, written in Viserion, which is a language native to Nadal. I am not sure if you know. Uh, no. In it, there is, um, well, the book was given to her by someone. And I look around when I say someone you know, like I'm looking around, like, I, I don't know who's listening, see if anyone's listening, whatever. And I tell uh, Torben, it's not a name I would like to repeat. But, and well, I get really quiet, real quiet when I say this. I think Pevrin's, Pevrin's connections may run deeper than we think. Pevrin, the, the boy. I nod. He...
I believe, and I don't know, but I believe his mother, and I get real quiet, might have been a priestess in the doll. Oh God, I, I, I see, I, right? Mm. It could mean that Peverin is actually nobility. The name that was used, and I do say it here in a very hushed tone, was Zol. I see. If, I, I say that kind of in a way to see if Wild might recognize that name. I guess I'll have to make a roll for that. Sure. Give me a knowledge and ability. Ooh, 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 sir. Um, yeah, yeah. You are familiar with the name. There was a. Of course you don't. You, there was a, a fairly prominent priestess. Um, that. Um, what gossip spoke, commanded, uh, a coven of vampire by the name of Alusada Zal. And she is fairly well known, um, in the world, but she's sort of like, she's like the church's boogeyman. They acknowledge her, but they don't like talking about her. Not out loud. So it's only a wee problem you're introducing, you say. I... <clears throat> mm. Right. I kind of chuckle a little bit. Just a wee problem. My thoughts lead towards something that was said by the professor. Um... I was whispering we were after a person. Now, he thought it was something. Later, he said no, it was somebody. And he thought that person was in Huddlestone. What if it's not that? What if it was wrong there? What if it's somebody connected to Huddlestone? And if he's a lantern, I don't know. Um, Rai had not considered in his Rai brain the the fact that Petro uh, Petros was looking for somebody. He had forgotten about that. Perhaps it was Everin he was looking for all along. I will. I would also mention there are some interesting, and by interesting, I mean frightening runes inscripted on one of the rooms in Zokar's inn. I noticed it when I was leaving. There was blood, Zokar claims, of a goat, but runes on the walls. Maybe some sort of room for protection, um, but there's definitely influences, especially magical influences, that are beyond me, but it doesn't lead to anything good. Magic rarely does. Uh-huh. Aye. If you start bothering gods, gods will start bothering you back. I nod. And, uh, I'm reminded of Eli for a moment. <laughs> I like the piece. I just think about him when you say that. I, um, I look back at the fire, and I'm just kind of staring at it, and I just say... I mean, it's too, it's too Torvin, but it's kind of just out there too. Just kind of throwing it out there. We, we may be in over our heads. I, uh, I, um, the only reason that I'm not packing up and going besides the coin is I feel like 
the people in the group are capable. I feel like you're capable. And I feel like we're going to need you. We're going to need everyone. Are you... And I kind of pause for a second. Are you willing to see this through? That's a very good question. I think I am. I I think I think the Profess is not done with us yet. I think we have to see this through. I Right feels a little bit better about that. He doesn't look so tense. He looks a little more relaxed, knowing. I mean, Torvin kind of like reeks like an aura of, of uh, at least some experience, right? You know, feels good to know that that if he's going to get involved, that you know the people around him are going to are going to be in it because there's been some question about that. And now that he's seeing where this is going, there's a big part of Rye. And I'm just throwing this out there, Zelhan. There's a big part of Rye that just wants to get the fuck out and get away. Like, run. Like, run from your past kind of shit, you know? So... I mean, Oz has already expressed that. Yeah, exactly. And that's why he, you know, like, uh, I don't know. I feel like Rye is kind of getting a lay of the land in the group and what everybody wants to do. And it's been kind of shaky. And now that he's found out this even more, you know, deep fucking connections, it's a little scarier. So, I mean, Rye even might be looking for some sort of comfort in a way mm. these are, these are things hurts. that uh these it are really very hurts. unsettling for i i just wish there were giants here but you can see them all right you you, you know what you're hitting Ugh. sideways like i told you before they come at you sideways i I... With that, I uh, I just kind of stare in the fire, just kind of sit next to him, and I love that all of us have giants in our background story. I also have giants in my background story. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's pretty much all I'm I'm going to probably. Yeah, I must admit I'm I'm trying. I'll continue to have a quiet conversation and lay on the die quietly, but trying to stay away from names and things that would be listening would go hello to you know just just avoiding those sorts of topics sure yeah you pay your mind you let sleep slowly overtake you though you fight it you eventually find yourself joining your peers and the night runs away from you before finally you're met with rays of light glistening through the side window. The fire has sputtered out, and all that remains is just a small trace amount of smoke rising up the chimney. Sounds awaken everyone. Kendra, staying busy, no longer idle, attempting to normalize her situation, she is making more rasherback bacon and more eggs than she's cared to count. She's being relatively loud about this. Silence is not much of her forte at the moment. Well, if she's going to be going to all that effort, I have to eat. That's just a rule. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming Rai would hear this because he's kind of sleeping in the living room, basically. Or sure. In the dining room, you know. You hear so the, probably... the, the the crashing of, of metal on, on what you sound like is, is a deep still in a pot. Um the smell of, of food permeating throughout the house is, well, it's, it's very welcoming. It's very warming considering where you are and what's happened to you. Um, I, Rai's gonna try to ignore it all. He's, he was up late. He's gonna be trying to sleep in. So he can hear her making stuff and, and you know, he can smell it and stuff. He's trying to roll. You know that fighting you do and you just try to roll over and just deal with it because you just, you're so tired. Yeah. So he's just tired. He's just going to try to sleep through through that, through the, at least a little bit in the morning. Oz will be up at the first clinking 
um, the rooster call and uh, assist with cooking if she allows him to. Sure. She I'll, welcomes. I'll be up as well, but and I'll go to the kitchen, but I won't cook. <laughs> <laughs> she welcomes so. any help at this point, and um, she is relatively quiet. Um, she isn't doing much in the way of conversating. She is definitely making just ham and eggs. It's gonna be is that that's simple for her. Um, and while she's not trying to be very flippant about the um, the, the the decoration upon the plate, she is kind of like slinging the food outward as much as she can, as quickly as she can, so she can just sit down and uh, kind of tear off a bit of bread and and sort of mind her own. Well, um, go on, go on, where, where's, where's Rye? Ah. Uh, I'm not sure. I can go get him if y'all want. No, it's it's fine. It's fine. Um, just. Oh, no, no, I can happily kick him. I, he's asleep, probably. I don't know. Well, it Did will get cold. Come in last night. Or do you I, want? Um, do you want me to kick I, him? I, I go and pick up some ham and go over to to Rye. Okay. okay. <laughs> wave it near. <laughs> I uh, take a sleepy eye and kind of, you know. Look I'm up. Going to eat it. <laughs> uh, I I take my hand. I kind of run it through my hair, you know, and kind of try to sit up. I'm just kind of eyeing Torben right now. Sure. You know, it's like I know, like I'm thankful you're getting me up for breakfast, but I'm also waking up. I'm not feeling very friendly, so I'm just kind of like, all right, all right, okay. It's I'm... getting closer to my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I get up. Oh, I just ate it. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Look, I'll get you some more. Torvin's jovial right. nature is enough to kind of shake, shake the dregs of whatever news you got, at least briefly. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Though I don't know if I like it. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if I like it, but it, it, it is waking me up. That's for sure. So I go and uh, I meet him at the table. You can tell that she's she's very gingerly digging in into the eggs um very simple by design it's just cooked over easy dipping ham in or not, not ham but uh, some of the, the tore off bread into any of the the egg that she can and she finally drops the um the the the, the flatware that she's using she drops the fork and she just kind of lays her hands out on the table <laughs> here <it> goes <laughs> who blinded me I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I was Why like, I was, was I blind? How does Kendra look right now? Does she look pestered? Does she's, she... <laughs> she's been doing her best to kind of keep it in. And it's just like, nobody's saying anything about it, Oz right? Oz is just like... <laughs> what's, everyone what's, else maybe what's, stops what's, and Oz just starts like putting food in his mouth and like handing food to <laughs> uh, Pecker. Who blinded me? I, I, can you see now? He, oh, well, you can see. What? You got blinded? And I could not hear. Did, did you have some whiskey, maybe? I thought. That's right. Does Torben actually know that, like, what happened? I mean, he knows no. that. that no, she got he was like, <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was about you. to say. That's right. It yeah. was just me and you. Um. I just say, don't look at, I'm like really tired and groggy. I'm just like, don't look at me. I don't, I'm not known for, I stop myself. If I were to blind you, you'd have known it. Uh, Eli will have gotten up at this point, you know, packed his things up nicely into his backpack as he does, all keeping all of his things together. He'll uh, enter the kitchen, somber look on his face, point at Oz and say it was the tubby one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You weren't even there. Uh, he, he was at the door. He was at the door. Yeah. If I'm allowed to be at, well, at in, in in as I enter <laughs> overhearing the conversation. Oh, she wasn't quiet about it. She like she yelled at who blinded her. <laughs> um, Oz is just like, well, I wasn't really trying to do it, to be fair. I look at Kendra and I just kind of, def 
not so much smirky as it is just kind of, I mean very smirky but you know also kind of pointed and I say man it, it must be uh tough having people cast spells on you and debilitate you without your control huh and I just kind of look at Kendra as I'm thinking about all the time she's held person on me see I let you go I could have held you there. I could have ran you through. You can see now. You can hear now. You had it coming. Maybe you did too. What the hell are you? Oh my god. I mean, to be fair, I'm just going to keep eating. But like, <laughs> talking with my mouthful. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, Oz is pretty genuinely fair. Using that word twice. Sorry. Um in in what he does so i I, i'm sure there is a good reason for it we may not think it's a good reason but i'm sure there was no malice behind it all right fine fine i will explain there was something under your bed and you were about to go shouting so i just yeah reacted and tried to make you be quiet and sorry there were some side effects to it all side effects yeah, you get stunned for a little bit, which makes blindness. you blind, and then you can't hear. It's, it's a whole hot mess. <laughs> Seems like Bob's face right now. I was like, puts food back in his mouth and like puts another thing of food down for Pecker. Those aren't side effects. That's the actual thing you did. An, I... an accident would be <clears throat> becoming intoxicated and. Pissing on the rug, or that's not even an act. I don't. That's that's why, oddly specific. Why? How does one? I, look, I promise I haven't off. done that. Rice trying to remember if he got drunk and if he peed on the carpet. If that's a pointed thing, but he can't recall he did that. So why? At least I don't think I did. So you got scared, and you fired a blinding and deafening spell well, at me. It was more I was trying to make you be quiet because there was something down there. I, Kendra I immediately com- turns to you, Eli. What happened to me? I mean, that is what happened. <laughs> I was just not lying. I don't know what they saw, but when I joined uh, the room and flipped that bed over, I didn't like what I found. There was a pool of blood and what appeared to be a wolf tail. And... I sure wouldn't like to sleep with that under me. Oh, a wolf tail. It was more than a wolf tail. Please. There were eyes and a hand, and it was like the hand that had... N- n- never mind. Oz, if you would be so kind as to... shore up your mental defenses so as to not have accidental ejaculatory magic, please... There's nothing scarier than... Well, then, if you make a promise that you're not going to go shouting when there's something under your bed, then I'll agree. I'm going to, like, chime in here real quick in between all this and just say, we thought you were in danger. I was sleeping. You were in danger because of what was happening under your bed. And so we tried to help. Was I being attacked? I think you might have been. I think we all might have been if you were hooting and hollering. I don't. Go ahead. I was going to say, I still don't think that was a good enough reason to use the word ejaculatory. I'm just. (laughs) Well, I thought it was kind of clever. Out of game, she definitely just said she had an accidental spurt and blinded someone. So. Yeah, apparently she's peeing on carpets. Right? Like, I'm just, I'm enthralled with this conversation personally. Does this happen? Do you get scared often? Well, uh, mm, sometimes I I think it's circumstantial. I mean, don't you get scared sometimes? I I mean, I I think I think everyone does. Well, then there you have it. But when I get scared, I don't command magic. Well, I don't do it normally either, but I, you were about to shout, and I wanted to stop you from shouting before whatever was under the bed started coming at us all. The only thing I remember was being grabbed. 
real and then you were like how could i scream open your mouth was... like you were gonna shout and i just i just i just didn't want you to do it sorry if you doubt anything <laughs> that oz is saying you can always go look in your room if you oz haven't just already blasted her like uh, i was like evil thing boom it was there was no that's why I'm not. I'm like munching into the eggs while I say that. <laughs> like, if you, you know, I'm like, hey, if you want to get mad, fine. But like, some crazy shit was going down in your room. You know, you can go see. <sighs> the real question is, why did you have a <laughs> blood circle under your bed? This is the, this is news to me. I didn't have well, this. I, I, do you think that I would put that down there? Well, maybe. Would we be having an idle, chattering conversation if we thought that you did? Well, he just suggested that I did with a maybe. I suppose that's how this conversation is going. Let me put it to you this way. When Peverin is being... I'm looking around for a word. A conduit and Peverin acts, is it Peverin doing it or not? Perhaps you didn't do it, but perhaps you did. Are you suggesting that I, I can become possessed as well? I'm suggesting that there are strange things happening here in this town and a little bit of understanding would go a long way. We did save your life. <laughs> Are you sure what was you going don't to kill know what me? was under your bed? What did you save my life from? The thing that was under your bed. It has uh, well, uh, wolf's a wolf's tail. A wolf tail. You saved me from a wolf's tail. I no, but there what was, was something the else untouched. Un <sighs> there was something else underneath there. <laughs> <laughs> but all that was left was a wolf tail. They are right, but I saw something else. Yeah. Which is strange unto itself, but also the yeah, and the blood and, and, and the letters, and there's just too many strange things happening. We've only been here for a few oh, days. Fine, fine. I, I will agree that there is something strange afoot. I think well, I think you might point. know more than you're willing to tell us. And actually, now since everybody is accusing me of something, <clears throat> I have some things to say to you. This, this is not a Miss. simple accusation. Your, this is not a simple accusation either. It was as simple as they, you they called to? you out. I, I peeked in that hole and I saw you talking to somebody. You're and, peeping on my room. And you were talking to somebody, a shadowy creature. Don't lie to me. Raya's like eggs out of his mouth, like, like, uh, like watching this unfold. She doesn't know what to say. Well, this was what I saw, so I was just saying what he saw. And I told Rai about it, and now they all know about it too. This is the sort of company what, that my father What's going kept. on here? Tell us the truth. You've got to know something more than you, what you're... What I know about. is I think that I may have made a mistake by letting a pervert into my home. I wasn't perving I, on you. Who was that? You're not even my type. Don't Who else is in me like that? Oh, oh, he, uh, you, okay, I, I. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, Rice speaks up and says, Oz is a lot of things, but I haven't found him to be a liar. Well, I have lied, but not <laughs> in this situation. I think you're all missing the important point here that after you guys left I told Oz to look through that damned uh, brass planchette and there was something not right <laughs> about that room I don't know if it's the house or the room but something did not want us to look in there uh, so regardless of the details, you probably should not sleep in there again. Noted. I didn't sleep there last night anyway. I, I stayed behind the couch and heard a conversation between Rai and Torvin. I'm not sure if I was supposed to or not, but there are things that I don't seem to understand. 
Aye, well. I stayed by the fire most of the night. I couldn't sleep next now to the fire. Now being a peeper, you're the peeper. In Think my house? You didn't even <laughs> yes, say that you I'm were there peeping you in were my house. In. <laughs> you admitted well. to peering through my keyhole. Because I heard a noise and I was going to check on Maybe you it was the sound of me getting right. undressed. It wasn't. It was a very creepy noise. And if that's the noise you make when you're getting undressed, I'm very concerned, madam. She still kind of like draws up her shirt. Not really. So, Don't worry. You're not my type anyway. What exactly did we miss uh, in this conversation between the two of them? God damn it, Eli. What did you hear? It's like she, she just she arose. What did you hear in my room? It was like as puts his hand in the middle of the table and then just like scrapes his hand along the table. Like oh, come on, don't die. <laughs> it was real creepy. I mean, to be fair, there was a ghost downstairs like around the same time though, so there was some weird shit going on. I agree. Did anyone else but... notice that every time that there's one of these extremely odd events that Pepperin's with us in the square by the I, monument in the house. But to be fair, we do tend to keep him next to us as well. See, is there anything weird going on right now? He's not here. We should check. Right. I don't know. I think this whole thing's a little weird. Right. You would you would notice at this point that that Kendra is still like looking to Oz, but she keeps looking back to you when the conversation of of Pevern comes up. She's like giving you like the side eye. Yeah, yeah. I I use this cue uh, to yeah to uh, I kind of look at her and I look at everybody and I kind of admit, you know, there may be more to Pevrin than we originally thought, which seems so strange to say <laughs> after everything we've learned. Like what? Well, I went to Zokar's, as I said I would last night, to check some of his wife's, uh, things, her personal effects. Takes a deep breath. There were, among other things, um, two journals, one of which is written in a secret manner of some kind in Invisarian, which is a common language spoken in Nadal. I do believe Zokar when he says that Nadal, his wife comes from Nadal. The other... I didn't know anyone wasn't believing it. One of the books he wouldn't let me take with him, or with me. Um, it's... It's got connotations. The book was given to his wife by, he's like looking around, he doesn't want to say, by certain entities that may be tied to <clears throat> Nadal, perhaps nobility. I am um, just point to my eye and then We'll walk around sort of, you know, and then I'm gonna leave the room and start to walk around the house. It just is a conversation. I wanna make sure it's quiet. Sounds it's, good. When you say that, like, <clears throat> it didn't hit her last night, but it hit her now. Kendra, she kind of get like, oh, <gasps> are Peverin? Of Sankthan? It may be that. It may be so. I then go on to walk my way through the next part of the story, which is also when I was leaving the inn, I noticed a room that 
you might want to take a look at. Well, the two of you. And I look over to Oz and Temerity. There were blood runes on the walls in the whole room. It was a small room. Zokar what said. Runes, uh, what kind of runes? I can't be sure. I am of Nadal, but I am not of its practices. Or at least I tried not to be. Did they look at least like they were from Nadal, though? Would I have known that? Have I seen these runes before in yeah. Nadal? Yeah, you were okay. you were certain that it, like, while there is uh, runes that you would expect to see in uh, the Zonkuthan book, um, there was some Viserian language. Um, I, I, uh, uh, I tell, yeah, you know, yes, I think so. They seem familiar, though I can't be totally sure. Um, it seemed a little out of my scope. Though, when I discussed it with Zokar, he did say that, uh, shit, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. He, he, did, he did say that it was where his wife went when she was trying to distance herself from whatever forces she may have been tied to. I think, uh, I think Heron's mother may have been a conduit as well. I think she was even concerned that Heron would take up the mantle, though I don't know how or why. Is there a way that I can, from what he's told me, do a religion check uh, about the runes to maybe, like, verify that they're not malicious and they're there just to keep, like, the ghosts from being able to inhabit him and not, like, some evil... Based on based on what he's kind of presenting to you now, um, it's going to be very difficult for you to determine that because he's it's not like he drew them or anything. You'd have to see them, but you could always um, venture a guess. Do you know Viserion? No, I don't know Viserion. Okay. Nope, I just have you know, religion. Are I mean, can, were they decipherable in a way that like uh, I, I could read the runes? Like, were they re no readable? No, okay. it's okay. When you, you finish saying that, uh, I was a little, well, I kind of gathered that much from what he told us the other day. And uh, my guess is that that room is made for what he precisely said. Well, exorcisms of some sort. Get the spirits out of their body. I get the impression that Zokar is quite ignorant to the life his wife had led before he met her which is not uncommon for those escaping a doll. They tend to start new lives. Now that we know all this, do you think that it's just chance that Pevrin was the one that stumbled upon the professor's body? Do you think maybe that he had one of the strange blackouts right before? Do you think maybe he could have been possessed and caused it himself? I don't know. I did inquire into Peverin's whereabouts that night. Zokar seems to genuinely believe that his son wasn't involved, though it's not somewhere he went normally. That is for sure. He also said that it could be. We don't know. But the boy also said that he it was it was a normal occurrence for him to pass out and wake up in strange places it wasn't something abnormal to him that makes so, a lot more sense now right takes a deep breath and looks around the table at everybody oz is very much paying attention to kendra and has not let his eyes wander from her even after even when responding to uh rise questions i look at everybody and i i also look at kendra i'm very aware of her presence there but she already heard me and torben talking so she probably heard all this or at least close to it i uh i tell i look at all of them and i and i tell them this is this is a much deeper situation than we may have originally understood if 
that boy is who I think he is. There are people that are going to want to know, and there are people that are going to want to find him. And I don't think it's a mistake that they have not found him till now. I believe that perhaps Petrov protected him in some way. I don't see how the boy would have made it this far without some sort of outside help. If Nadal wants you, they will find you. They will take you. Is Kendra acting strange at all? She's still clutching at her shirt, but it's not for the purpose. It's just like memory at that point. She's just kind of like enthralled in what's going on. Eli uh, is going to take notice of Oz kind of looking at Kendra and he's going to say she knows what she knows now. <clears throat> and we, we lost the uh, convenience of discretion when we barged into her room and flipped her bed over. So there's no helping that now. I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about who she's talking to. I? Well, I'm not She's talking. Never given us a reason. I'm not talking. To, I heard to... you say the words that you were worried something was wrong with the burial. You were asking what you were gonna do, and then another voice said to you, "In due time," and it was a creepy, creepy voice that I can't redo myself. So you've been watching me for multiple nights. No, this was just that one night. We've been watching everything that's been happening in this tune because, well, let's be serious. Things are wrong and they're getting worse. Well, forgive me for asking for permission to pray in my own home, but I heard no voice. Maybe it was only you who heard the voice because I heard nothing. I get no responses back and I pray nightly. I sense motive. Of course you can. Yeah, I would also like yeah, to. I do that too, just in case. I don't sure. trust her. I yeah, I think, I think this is something where we're all yeah. kind of like, because uh, yeah. like, we know what we is know. This is us. Okay. Also, I saw it with moment. my eyes. Oh, I hate, I'm, oh, that's my reroll. <laughs> yeah, I could have been talking, though. <laughs> I, I'm a two. Fuck it. I'm just a two. Bri's like, no, it's that's right. That was she happen. was praying. Yep, she was praying real hard. Eli, <laughs> similar situation. Uh, Oz. Uh, and Temerity, you, you, you buy it. It, you don't have any reason to, to believe that she's lying. Then Oz, uh, leans back in his chair and he, he's just like looking around. I'm sorry if that comes to shock, but I, even I, though I practice practical science and have studied Far more than most, I even have my own faith. Uh, as you said that, whatever you heard, knew you were there. Maybe it was talking to you. Can I use what? What are you talking to me about? What you got, Misty? Warn you. Can I use detect uh, evil on her? Of course, of course you can. I That's did a, do that just, once at the start, and she, she passed it. Yeah, I'm just. But do I have to I roll? Is it turn to a to a sit yeah. or what? No, you you have detect alignment, and um, because oh, it's alignment. it says at level two at will, an inquisitor can use detect chaos, detect evil, detect good, or detect law. She can only use one of these at any given time. So you are casting detect alignment. Are you using detect chaos, detect evil, detect good, or detect law? Um, I'm going to detect, one. uh, chaos. Okay. Um, she is not chaotic. Okay. Or evil. Narrowing it down. Get in there. Uh, I, I, right now. I look at, uh, Kendra, and I just give her sort of a, I'm not, I mean, okay, I'm going to say this is intimidation. I'm not like throwing it down on the table or anything, like really threatening her. Okay. But I do look her straight in the eye and I tell her, if you're keeping anything from us, you're putting all of our lives in jeopardy. If you've got something to say, 
now's the fucking time to say it. What is and it you seem to think that I'm keeping from you? you? What is what is it you seem to think that I'm keeping from you? What do I have to gain from lying to you? Think about it for a moment. I don't know you from anyone else. You came into my home telling me lies. My father died. I, I have lie. nothing to gain from lying to you. I've been forthright yeah. and honest. I thought you did when you were talking to some creepy boys, but if you didn't, if you truly say that you didn't, then maybe there's something messing with my head. Is there any reason that you have to believe <clears throat> that would lead us to, uh, I, how am I going to word this? When you found out that Oz heard a voice that was surprising to you, <sighs> is there any reason it wouldn't be? Has anything strange happened with you beyond the normal strange of this godforsaken town? You mean short of an apparition appearing over a bed that I'd grown up in and stroked the, the head of young Pevrin? No, that's that's as odd as it honestly gets. That is my Benevolent. first... Benevolence. Benevolence. Anything malevolent. I've... I've... No, nothing, nothing of any malevolent nature. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I have nothing. There's nothing to be sorry about. It's more of a just a question. We're all getting worked up, I think. Yeah, I mean, really, if I, if you'd come to one of our doors, knew we were alone, and heard another voice, I think with all that's going on, I, I, I feel as if there's some understanding there to be had. We're just trying to figure out what happened mm. to your father. You're you're right. I'm There's a lot going on. It's okay. It's okay. Well, I need to go talk to Jaminda. I need to figure out what those potions are. I see if any of them will be helpful for us. Jaminda can be very shrewd and she's She's very closed off. She doesn't like working with though she doesn't know. I just keep that in mind. She believes that everyone is suspect of of anything and everything. You staying in this town after my father's passing, she might even have reason to believe that you had some involvement in his death. Smart well, woman. I will reassure her that I don't, but I can understand that concern. And so far, she's been super helpful for all of us and uh, very kind. Well, uh, Eli's going to stand up and say, well, as delightful as this morning conversation has been, I've got some things I've got to take care of today. So I trust that you'll all stay just as busy. And, uh, seeming more somber and assholeish than usual. He'll saunter towards the door and head off looking for the, the forge that Zokar told him about. Sure. Okay, so when he I, leaves, I will help clean up the Whenever that happens, you guys can yeah, finish. Yeah, when he when he leaves, I look at everybody and exit stage. I I just say I don't know about that one. <laughs> well, I don't think he knows about you either. The two of you need to get your Ducks in a row. Yeah, well, one of us was pointing their weapon at the other and talking out loud to some entity that wasn't even there. Did he not look touched to any of you? I've seen foul less. To be fair, <laughs> there was something weird going on with his eyeball, and believe me, I've seen what that thing sees. It ain't pretty, so if he was seeing the stuff that I was seeing and he was thinking it was true, well, I might have reacted the same way. I'm just saying. He may still be seeing it, too. I mean, if the glass is still stuck in there, and I think there's debris still stuck in his eye. There well, is. That's a, a, a magical relic of some sort that's actually in him, and that 
can't be good. And no, he needs just to, to follow up. I told him. Just to follow up with that. Um, not only is it in his eye, but we do understand that this isn't necessarily a benevolent relic. He does have some sort of evil shard in his eye. Mm. Yeah. Temerity, I think you would, I'm pretty sure that you would know that the tool itself is not, it's not evil. It's not evil okay. related. It's it's a it's a mundane tool that has some sort of like possessive magic, but it's all like its level of alignment falls on its user. Okay. <clears throat> it's not it's not evil. I'll just pipe up, um, kind of clearing my plate away, just existing while this conversation goes on around me. Uh, it, it's not evil. He he's a he's well intense, a, a very good man, and. Uh, He's not evil, and that device isn't evil. So um, that should be okay. It's I all about how he uses it. I don't have uh, a very good rapport with those that follow the gods. And I do know that they tend to cause the most trouble sometimes. Ugh. Well, I mean, you winked at me. Well, that's because you're cute. Well, okay. But Eli's not bad either for for a paladin with a thing in his eye. And just, I mean, just, I would say different things drive us. I'm not um, saying, I'm not saying the man is evil. I'm saying <laughs> the man might do evil things in the pursuit of good. Um, well, we all have five our of us. times. Good. Oz says, looking yeah. around. I agree with Oz. And there's five of us. We, we've been operating pretty good for the last couple of days in terms of decision by mostly committee or secret club, as it were. Now yeah, look well, at Oz. Oz seeing like seeing he's getting he's very little support in this in this group, he just says, "Well, if his hammer was pointed at one of you, you might have felt differently." To I guess fair. it's okay since it's me. To be fair, it was pointed at me. Because I stepped in front of it. We're not going to let anyone get hurt over this. We have a goal yeah. here. Uh, that, uh, Hamel was pointed at you because of what he saw. And that's still a reality that needs to be addressed. That's just a thing. And I think... <laughs> I Ryan's confused at this. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I thought you were done. I think if I saw that, I'd do the same. I think the fact is that he put the hammer down away from you is enough of a statement as well. After his conversation out loud with his god, uh, he, I mean, did the man look sane to anybody else? Well, and if he, he did, like I any other god follower that speaks to gods just out willy nilly, of course, yeah, for sure. They're all Look, I agree with you. Everybody who talks to their gods like that, it's a little strange to me, Let, too. Let's it's be like fair. you think someone's talking back to you, but I don't think you Well, I mean, I get, let's, I get to have the tea. Let's be fair. He did have a like a magic shard of glass in his eye, and he was seeing a lot of stuff that normal people are not meant to see. And religious or no, I think that would drive the best of us momentarily batty. And that's I, why I was giving him a little benefit of the doubt. He was discussing whether or not to smite me where I stood. He meant to kill I, me. He meant to kill me. Uh, Is that the kind of partner and companion that you all want to be traveling with? I mean, is he going to help us finish what we've started? Rai shrugs, shrugs his shoulders. And just says, uh, I, 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 I see your point, right? I sucked venom out of this man two days ago, like <laughs> with my mouth. Lucky? I wasn't <laughs> awake for that. And no one has told me. I will say this one thing about him, though. I don't I, know how I was saved, honestly. So he said that I, he saved your life. He didn't say how, though. I yeah. can direct him, but I can't direct you. 
So we could be saying the same thing about that. I think we all need to pull back and say that we're all individuals. We don't know each other. For, so we have to figure this out because of the professor and because of this tune. It's just hard to figure things out when you've got a hammer poking you in the back. You never know when it's going to swing down on the back of you. I don't well, like working like that. If it's any consolation, he said no. And he hasn't done that to any of us. <laughs> so you're actually in the better position. Well, I'm thankful that in his crazy talk, he decided not to smite me down. I just hope he'll come to the same conclusion next time or about any one of you. Well, let's I, keep him smiting elsewhere. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think that one time is, is, is situational, but again, that becomes a pattern. And that, I would say the same for any of us. So I will tell you that I, I have a singular goal and the death of any of you is not on that docket. So it's in my general interest to keep all of you alive. It's good to know. Thank you. You're, you're quite welcome. I mean, I don't really kill people willy nilly, um, but I don't feel as if he, I feel as if you think he's a threat and the two of you need to figure that out because we have work to do. Oz made a face and was picking up dishes when you were like, I don't kill people willy nilly. I was like, does she kill people? <laughs> you know, and, uh, is putting the, cleaning up the dishes. He's been kind of quiet just listening to the conversation. I mean, not alive people. All right, it's fine. I've worked with many people before. I know how they get, and it's okay. When one of you is bloody on the ground because of a hammer strike, I'll tell you, you should just work it out with Eli. I... And at that, I get oh up from the God. table. At that, I get up from the table, and I go to walk out the, the door. Where are you going? I don't know. I'm getting some air. I'm getting some fucking air because I'm starting to get mad and I'm just going to eat some peaches and I'm just going to get some fucking air. I was just going to meet Rye by the peach tree. Before he walks Our out, though. Secret meeting. Does Rye turn back around at all to look in the kitchen? No, I'm like so mad. I just get like after I say my okay. thing, I do that thing like guys do in relationships when they say Ugh. their thing and then they're like, and then they walk out and they're like, that's just Ugh. how it is. You know, that macho shit. So. Okay. <laughs> he's like, he's Damn fed it. up. He's made his, he's made his thing and he's just standing up and he's just, he just goes for the door and he opens it, you know, kind of, and that doesn't slam it, but it's, it's sounds like a slam just cause he's strong. You know, it's a little more emphasis, probably surprised at the sound when he closes. He's like, okay, I'm not that mad, but whatever. Fuck him. Eats a, eats a peach. Can you wait. bring back some wolf balls? <laughs> Eli's in the tree waiting, throw some peaches right at Rye's head. Carves a hand. I've been attacked <laughs> twice by Eli now. <laughs> the man threw peaches at me. They were delicious, but I was threatened. All right. Well, so where's, go outside. where's Rye going? Oz is going to try to catch up with him before he okay. we gotta We, we got to split. Yeah. Okay, I'm literally gonna walk up to that to that tree and I'm gonna punch that tree. Okay. I'm gonna punch that peach tree. All right. Okay. I'm out there. I'm a little angry. I'm a little upset. And I'm just gonna pow. I'm just gonna give a nice little. Pow. He's fist and peaches. Tor <laughs> Torvin, Temerity, uh, where where are <laughs> you going? Sorry, I'm trying not to say changing my name to Peaches. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Um, <laughs> no, I'm totally derailed. Um, fisting peaches. Fisting peaches. I will be <laughs> disappointed in the kitchen because I was going to wink at him as he walked out. Do you wink and anyway and he doesn't turn around? Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> 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 we, um, I'll do it. Just where, where all do we need to? What's on our list right now? Um, I'm going to Jamenda's. Yes. But yeah, before what that, I'm list? stopping to talk to Ryan. Church. Eli's going to Jorfa. Oz is going to Jaminda. I'm going to leave and go to the church as well. Yes. Okay. So we have Temerity heading to the church. It's exciting. The forge, the church. The we need potions. names from the from the church, right? Yeah, we need the names from the church. Torvin, well, what about what you? Significance of those? I'm still wanting to do research um, on the whispering way because not so much them but the professor was figuring it out you know he was so close to it and i think he might have 
missed some bits or got some bits right or that. And I just want to make sure that we know as much as possible about his intent with them. Sure. Like he's Heaven. So yeah, more research there. I, I really think there's something about the fact that he was so focused upon it happening, uh, wanting someone from Harrowstone. And now we have somebody that could be a vessel for that person from Harrowstone. So I want to try to figure out where that linkage is. Yeah, the way is looking for someone from in mm-hmm. Harrowstone. It's, it's gotta mm-hmm. be Peverin, right? Like, well, no, Peverin, I just think is gonna be the vessel to get them. Mm-hmm. Mm. I, I mean, see. he could literally be like a, like, they could like stick the soul of any crazy thing in, in him, right? And then he'd be mm. like in the physical world, right? I mean, there's gotta the be advantages. The there's gotta be advantages to that, obviously. If you, I mean, I feel like there's it's advi- like a there's doorway advantages into that we, the world, right? Yeah, like I don't feel like we're, yeah, like we're taking advantage of what he- Heaven actually is. I don't think we're doing that. Not that I think Rai could, but like, uh, that's a huge tool to be able to just like conduit the dead, you know? For sure, for sure. That's valuable. So do you want to stay here to investigate, or do you feel like it might be more valuable to sort of dig into the depths of the town, find out more of the townsfolk? I'm very good at talking to people okay. um, in a town than I am researching a library. Sure. All right. So where might you go in the town? I mean, there is the Church of Rasmus. I could chat. I don't do good with the church. You're welcome um, to come to the forge. There's a dwarven forge person too there actually i probably just go to the forge to start thinking what's next <laughs> okay so we've got eli you guys just end up in the same place and torvin well he, he uh earlier because i had it's asked forge. um Zokar about about the the blacksmith and he said there was like a legendary dwarven blacksmith so yeah he and it with a forge so it could maybe get some information too and it's always good to have a dwarf with you even if you're you know, a dwarf paladin, or a uh, human. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have this scene here. It'd probably be our last scene of the night. Oz. You end up deciding to chase Rye outside. You hear him storm off. He doesn't slam the door, but you can tell that tensions were beginning to rise in the room. This is after Eli's already gone. Temerity has expressed her interests in seeing to the church. Torvin even admits, you know, maybe going to the forge isn't such a bad idea. They did say that there was a dwarf there. It'll at least get me out of the house, give me an air to think, and maybe meet some new people. Kendra says that she's going to stay in and do some tidying. Rye, he's your mom's brother. So, you run after him. You bolt outside. He's walking directly across the street to this peach tree, and he kind of broods there for a moment. You see him white-knuckling his fists before he just kind of draws up, and he just strikes the tree. Do you hit it multiple times, Rai, or is this just like a a one-and-done kind of thing? Just one-and-done. Okay. Still upset? Uh, I'm I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm cooling off. I hit the tree that felt it felt like that and then i'm just gonna start doing some like push-ups start like working out i'm just like anger like sure fun, you know motive using the motivation of anger to work out i gotcha he begins to use this this energy you see him uh the frustration is mounting do you kind of rush over to him do you kind of take your time what does this look like for Oz? Oz takes his time, um, and then he's like, <clears throat> um, hello? I uh, look up for my push-ups, and I just keep doing push-ups. I look back forward. Look, um, I know there's a lot of stuff going on, but I had some secret club stuff that I wanted to talk to you about. 
Uh, at this, I uh, I kind of put myself in a sitting position from a push-up position. I'm just sitting on the ground looking at Oz. Like, all right, what do you got? What did you get? I saw you grab something. I uh, reached down to kind of feel around in my pockets for that key. Uh, and I, I kind of, I kind of like pat my pocket uh-huh. over it. And, uh, I say, you know, yeah, I found something. Well, I, it's a key. I don't okay. know what to, maybe to the book that Eli has. I wouldn't even dare to ask him for it. <laughs> but maybe it's to that. I don't know. Will there was a key. To I had to it? I had to jimmy it open. I busted the thing when I did it, unfortunately. But I put it back. It was inside of the it was it a what it's a stopwatch a locket i keep wanting to say locket uh, it was like a pocket watch yeah. pocket watch yeah it was inside the pocket watch actually in a sort of secret compartment it was hard to see which is why i busted it i had to pry it open but other than that i i don't know there was something else I tried to leave with it. I tried to bury it, but I was visited by Petra. What? Yeah. I don't know if it was really him or some entity. What did he say? He told me not to take the locket. So I put it back, but he didn't say anything about the key inside. I give a little smile. I smiles. Well, I guess he didn't say the key specifically. I shrug. Either way, at this point, I'm more concerned about Eli than I am about the rest of this damn town. You really don't think anything's wrong with the man he's unhinged you don't think i mean oz come on well, you know how these religious types can get and kind of aggressive the accusations the <sighs> entitlement the holier than thou you haven't I feel ever like dealt that's with almost that. everyone who talks to me though yeah i can see that I understand how you're feeling. Uh, Ride takes a deep breath. I don't know. I have some other concerns. Such as? I trust that Kendra maybe didn't know she was talking to somebody. But I'm I'm telling you the truth. There was something in there. There's something following her around, and I'm worried that now that she has that information about Evers, I don't know what that shadow thing's gonna do with it. Well, if anything does happen, we know there's only a few culprits. Only people that know about it are the six of us in that room. So, if something else happens, well, it's seven likely if you one count of us. Pecker. Well, I guess seven if we count Pecker. <laughs> uh, he relented on that a little bit. It wasn't his first thought. Um, I think we're in even deeper than we thought before. And, uh, I I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, and like uh, almost as if I like completely forgot, I do say that uh, 
there was one other thing I wanted you to look at. Just maybe take a look, see what you can find out. I think it might be magical. I'm not sure. All right. What is it? I'm going to pull out the headwear. Uh, the, uh, whatever oh. it's called. Di- 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 diadem. 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 Yes. I'm going to call that out or, or pull that out and kind of just kind of like not all the way out, but just kind of show oh, her a little bit of it. Me. A little peek. Yeah, he from kinda the, yeah a little peeky peek from the coat. You know, like, like the see the wares. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to pull it out here, but you should probably take a look at it. Uh, can I knowledge arcana to see? Or, oh, actually, I have a spell for this. <gasps> I'm going to detect magic. Okay. You do, in fact, detect that there are magical auras. How long will you focus on this? Um, because the longer you focus on it, the longer it has to be available, and more people could see this, potentially. Mm. I guess long enough to know if it's magical, because that's what he's asking. Yes. He just wants to know yes. if it is magical. <clears throat> it is, in fact, magical. Uh, mm. Do I get to know what kind of all? Number of rounds equals to the aura type, determining the potency of the aura, um, the strength of each aura that is attached. Learning the school depends. Do you want to? You want it to be out for? You know it's magical. If you want to focus on it longer, you could determine what school it's from. All right. I, uh, I will say out loud then initially. Well, it, it is magical. Do you need to know anything else? Well. Probably, but I'm glad I didn't tell everyone back there. Eli probably would have shoved it in his eye. <laughs> and I look down, I'm still kind of bitter. <laughs> so, so, Koval, I'm not trying to, but like you did threaten me. Okay, I'm I'm a little I'm a little shaken up. All right. Yeah, well, I'm a little upset that he put it in there. To I told him not to use it, and then he used it anyway. And also, then he threw me under the bus oh, right it. there with Kendra. Eli somewhere probably. You're all sinners. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I got a bad feeling about that guy, but maybe we should show this to Temerity. She seems to be pretty well versed in the. Well, if I had a little bit more time, I could figure out more about it. Mm. All right. Maybe once we're all back tonight, I'll and, let her take uh, a look at it. If for some reason we need to hide it for some, I have a way to do that too. Mm, at this, I kind of perk up. Oh, yeah. How's that? Well, it would take me a little time to cast. Hmm. And what exactly would that do? I have Cause the ability to froth at the object. mouth. Is that gonna like set an alarm off or something? If you have like... a way to obscure an object. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I just pasted it in chat. Sure, for eight hours. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I uh, I, just, I explain uh, this spell to you. I shake my head and maybe we'll use that at one point. I think for now, I'll just hold on to it. I'm not sure if anyone's looking for it. I think if they were, they probably wouldn't have had a hard time finding it at Zokar's. I can't be sure. None of this is sitting well with me. None of this Question. is right. Does the key ring up as magical? It does not. Mm, okay. Just was curious. Do you share that with me? I don't think so because it doesn't, you, don't, you weren't asking about it necessarily. That's fine. Oh, but if it comes up, he, he wouldn't hide it from you. But. Rye, Oz. Give me a perception check, please. Mm. Somebody watching us? Beepers. Watchers. It's probably Eli again. No, it's <laughs> probably Kendra. <gasps> I'm re-rolling that. Thought you might. 23. That's significantly better. Hey, <laughs> I'm like, I'm Rye. supposed to be good Not at bad. Rye, you, um, seeing stuff. Oz will catch this moments before you. 
you hear a buzzing sound. What, what is that? And then, Rai, you can hear it as well. You begin to feel it <laughs> as you glance over the tree line, and three shadows dart over the top of the tree line. <laughs> These large scaled proboscis, probably about a foot and a half long. These six wings and these dregs of legs that hang off of these bulbous bodies, they zip just over the tree line. And based off of the details that were given to you, you have no doubt that these are, in fact, dirges. These are... Sturges. Sturges, Sturges? yes. Sorry, forgive me. Sturges. Sturges. They are Sturges. They move... They're dirging Sturges. These are songs! They move over the top of the tree line, over the top of both of you, just past the village circle. Can we see where they're headed? Just outside of town, at least outside of the immediate town. They're not slowing their pace whatsoever. I look over at Oz. What do I see when I look over at Oz? What is Oz, Oz doing? Oz is like, eyes are bulging and looking up at the sky and he's like, what? What the heck? Okay, so you saw it too. That's, that's not good. And with that, the camera will pull away and we will end our session there with the introduction of the Sturgis flying overhead. You know they're coming from my eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, You're boy. like our own Mike Wazowski. <laughs> oh, so, man. Now that that has been introduced, guys, let's go ahead and uh, and do our, our rounds here. Make sure that we give everybody the proper out and detail that they deserve. That they deserve. And, um, man, I hope you guys had a good time tonight. I, I really enjoyed tonight's game. It was a good time. It was good times. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot revealed. A lot I got to think about. Good. All right. We got Cobalt. Tell us about your boss. What are you doing? Where can we find you? Um, Cobalt Streak on Twitter and YouTube and Twitch. Uh, I've been doing a lot of Binding of Isaac new DLC streaking uh, and also finishing out Resident Evil 8 this week. Nice. And, uh, yeah, stream basically in the evenings. Stop on by if you want to hang out. Perfect. Good Misty. Tell us about you. What are you doing? Where can we find you? Me? Twitch.tv slash Imperial or get, just go there because my other name was spelled all wonky. Um, I am currently raising money for St. Jude. We are on our road to $20,000 hairs, uh, seeing what we can do. I've gotten pied in the face. I've had to build little miniature things. It's it's all super great for the kids. Um, my poor partner has eaten his fair share of being boozled because I won't do that. <laughs> um, but he loves me enough to do it for me. So that's a keeper right there. Um, still doing my Stardew thing, trying to get back to sewing. I have too many things to sew, too little time. So that's really it. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much, Misty. Wild, tell us about you. What are you doing? Where can we find you, boss? Hey, folks. Um, I'm wild on Twitter, wild on Twitch, wild pretty much everywhere. Um, I'm just hanging out at the moment over here to a large degree. I should be live again soon. We're almost moving to the house. So as you can see by the glorious new black dropper, no more green screen. Perfect. Soon. That looks awesome. Yeah. It's upon us, friends. It's a good time. Thank you, wild. We got Maggie. Tell us about you. What are you doing? Where can we find you? Hi, I do something every single day of the week. So there's some content coming out. If you're interested in checking it out, you can follow me at Margaret Crone and all of the places. That's where I'm at. And I let you know whenever those things happen, unless the internet doesn't let me. But I do attempt to at least you. At least you. At least I try to. There we go. Words are hard. Um, <laughs> And I make video games for a living. I'm currently working on a game called Ashes of Creation. And if you want to check it out, you can check it out at Ashes of Creation in all of the places. That's me. Perfect. I must have. Hello, boss. You're up. What are you and where can we find you? Um, I've been actually taking last week pretty easy. So I haven't been streaming uh, that much. Just mostly uh, hanging out in the Discord, watching movies with everybody. If you guys want to join us, I'll probably just be watching some Rick and Morty in our discord so if you uh do you mind me posting a link no i might go go for it or in the chat okay yeah. i'll probably post it in a second 
Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to watch that. If you guys want to uh, see what I do or you know, find me, you can check me out at twitch.tv slash Elaheim. You can find out all my social media stuff from there. Uh, I usually am live in the wee hours of the morning. So Eastern time, uh, anywhere between midnight and 5 a.m. in the morning, you'll probably find me live even a little longer into the morning. Um, so if you're up and you are insomniac like me, then by all means, stop on by and hang out with us. We like to have a good time, and I promise I won't try to kill uh, too many dogs in the process. Hey. Um, uh, Bub, thanks for uh, DMing. Thanks for hosting this whole thing. Of course. Uh, t tell us about you. I'm Bub. I do Bub things. I play games on the internet. I tell stories, and I try to make voices loud. So um, if you guys want to hang out here, uh, Mondays, I've been, am now recently starting to tackle It Takes Two with Maggie. Um, tonight, we do this here, which is kind of awesome. Wednesday night's Shackled City, we're closing on episode 200, which is going to be a big dungeon crawl and almost like a 20th level monster reveal. I'm very excited for it. Uh, it's going to be a bloody mess. Um, Thursdays, I hop on over to Unmade Gaming's channel, where I can be found playing Kitchens, a synth uh, scientist that was recently just revealed to be a David model synth from the series news to me i just found that shit out so that was kind of cool uh and friday nights i typically take it off um but i think if we can climb over 1800 on patreon i might sneak in a 12-hour stream on friday yeah we'll see we'll see uh but that's that's what i do guys right now just come find me i do all the things and i'm doing more of that soon hopefully so i'm gonna go ahead and boogie for now uh, I'm going to release all of my players. Thank you guys for, for bringing your game tonight. I know we that... We were shackled to our desks, in case you didn't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I kept I here. Wish. <laughs> <laughs> what? Listen, the, the, well, we the more... Well, into bondage. I, the more often that you guys want to play longer, the easier it is for me to uh, to deliver all of the best content. Uh, I just wasn't sure if you guys were prepared to do, like, potentially a half an hour to hour long extra in a combat scene, because... We're going to be going into our there second combat is. stage. Yeah. They can be vicious. Are we all going to be able to get there in time? Like the, you know, like the Power Rangers assemble kind of thing? Or I mean, I'm going to where they're going. Yeah, where they're going. <laughs> they're going right to either my eye or Pevrin. So, I mean, I, I, would, I would think. Uh, well. Man. <laughs> and then Bob's like, ha, ha, ha. Got, you got lots of plans. Lots of ideas. Yeah, Thanks good guess, lot. guys. Good guesses. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Thanks a lot, guys, for absolutely everything. Uh, if you guys want to keep the stream alive, keep the dream alive. Check out patreon.com forward slash the bubber not. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to boogie for now. Take it easy, guys. Have a good one. Peace. I'm out of here.